from Chocolate Town, USA, the Pennsylvania Cable Network in association with the PIAA presents high school football. Tonight, championship in Quad A, the champion out of the East of the number seven team nationally in the latest USA Today poll, Central Bucks West, looking for a second consecutive Quad A championship. The champion out of the West, first time since 1973 that they won the WPIL, the only 600 game winner in the WPIL, Newcastle. The Red Hurricane roaring in here on a roll in the postseason. Good evening, everyone. Jed Donahue along with the coach Gary Sutton, Mark Shuey, our WIT Up Production crew in partnership with the PAA and PCN. There you see the Red Hurricane being introduced to this large crowd here in Hershey tonight. They come in a huge underdog. Let's go to Mark Shuey right now. When we say huge, well, we're not kidding. We mean it literally when we talk about Central Bucks West. Maybe one of the most fearsome offensive lines put together in recent high school history, and many of them were here a year ago in this game as they uh, just totally dismantled Upper St. Clair a year ago behind the great Dave Armstrong, who's now at Michigan. But Ben Carver is where you start with this whole offensive line. Yeah, that's Number the guy 79. right in the middle of your picture, Ben Carver. He is a good one, 300-pounder, uh, and Ben Carver and his mates, uh, they led the way for over 500 yards of ground-oriented offense in the Quad A title game last year against Upper St. Clair that Jeb was talking about. And I'll tell you what, there is absolutely no drop-off in the CB West offense this year. Uh, Dustin Pashotti picked up right where Dave Armstrong, the fine tailback who went off to Michigan, uh, where he uh, he was an All-State player. Dustin Pashotti, he's closing in on 2,000 yards Definitely rushing this season. Yourself, so, I mean, it, it, Central Bucks West is just as strong, and this is scary, if not stronger than last year's team offensively. Head referee Richard McCrellis gathering the Gentlemen, captains. Let's Dick eavesdrop. Dick referee Bob DeMarco, your umpire. Anything problem on the inside, come to us. We have a problem, we're going to come to you, okay? Central Bucks, you're the visitor, you're the home team. You get to call it. Call it in the air, please. Call the tail. The tail, you win the toss. You want to receive or kick or defer? Receive. And what goal do you want to defend? Okay, come right back around this way. Central Bucks won the toss. They will receive. Newcastle kickoff. Gentlemen, good luck. Have a good game. That tells you everything right there. Mike Fenton, 300 game winner this year, one of the few coaches ever. Let's take a look at this offense. Mark was telling you Ben Carver, but Chris Havener is another guy with a lot of experience. Bobby Bowser, they go about 255 pounds, meat on the hoof across the front there. And Carver is a 300 pound bookend. And Dustin Pashotti is a guy that they're going to go to an awful lot. Number 33, an absolute hammer. He replaced Armstrong. Same plays, different guys, same result. Right. This team does not throw the ball a whole lot. They can if they want to I mean, early in the year uh, against uh, games that weren't really competitive ball games. They put the ball up 10 or 15 times per game. But when they get into a competitive situation, they like to keep the ball on the ground. Gary, real quick, underdog Newcastle. Just sell it out, I guess. Well, you got to put the heart in the field tonight. Come out and find something new to throw at this team and try to make it a, a race and see if you can just hang in the game. Maybe you'll get a break. Our WITF production crew going to take you around the sight sounds of the Hershey Park Stadium. The championship in Quad A with a Newcastle marching band led by Dr. Tom Zimprella.
good as I thought, Jed. I think if you're Newcastle tonight, one of the things you've got to do is somehow find a way to hang on to the ball, get ball possession time underneath you, and keep that potent offense off the field for Central Bucks West. That could be a job that will be very, very formidable tonight for Newcastle. Well, Nick Marmo's a guy that's already had unofficial visits to Ohio State and Penn State. 6'6", 300 pounds. They're going to have to have him have a big night. Pat Kane is a guy we'll call an awful lot on the offensive side. A guy that was here in March, by the way, with a basketball team. And uh, in the secondary, Ray Peluso's a guy that uh, is, uh, is somewhat of a playmaker. Uh, they're going to have to be big on run support tonight. The linebackers are going to have to fill the gaps, be very active. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, that is where the game's going to be won and lost. That line of scrimmage, and, and uh, uh, like we said, we might as well say it right up front, uh, that, that's tilted heavily in the favor of Central Bucks West on paper. But this Newcastle team has a lot of heart, and that just doesn't show up in the box score. Sean Michael Janssen going deep along with Dave Edwards, and we are underway in quad A. And it comes out for Dave Edwards. Edwards to the 25, slices forward to the 28-29 yard line. Good pursuit for Newcastle. Ed Sikora, 6'2", 185-pound senior on the stop. And here it comes, La Machine well, on, Dave, the, on the field here. Dave Edwards needs just 40 yards. That's the ball carrier right there. And he needs just 40 yards rushing tonight to reach 1,000 for the season. He stepped in for the injured tailback Chris Ortiz, who suffered a, suffered a uh, torn MCL during a preseason scrimmage. And uh, Edwards, uh, he gets better each time out, Coach Mike Pettinson. Mike Oriel, the quarterback, pitched Edwards. Big hole. Cuts it forward to about the 33 or 34. It's a gain of 4 or 5. Average yards on first down. That's one of the subtle stats in any football game. And Central Bucks West is good on first down as anybody in Pennsylvania. Right away, Jed, you see an unbalanced line for Central Bucks West. They try to sweep to the left side. Newcastle has a lot of fight. Opening minute of the football game. Second and five. And we may have too much time. We'll wait for the verdict on the field. Mike Oreo replacing Corey Potter. Quarterback last year led them to a state championship. Kind of a work in progress. And Travis Blumgren the last time they made the final round. Dead He's ball. Penn State now. Crossman, five yards. First down. Now you line up in the neutral zone defensively in Central Bucks West with a gift there. Well, that's one thing that Newcastle can't afford here tonight, nor can any team once you get to the state final game. But, I mean, your first series of downs, you really don't want to make mental mistakes. Dustin Pashahi, the lone setback behind Oriole. Nothing subtle about this offense. Pashahi's first carry. Tackle. The pile moves forward for about three or four yards. One of the things that Central Bucks offense has been likened to from time to time is a scrum, like you'd see in rugby. It's not always that pretty. Look at this. Yeah. It's just a whole bunch of bodies moving forward, and you get in behind the wave and just float a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, you talk about uh, simple football. This is simple smash-mouth football, no question about it. You just put your head down, cover the ball, and bowl straight ahead. I mean, this isn't some complex Delaware wing T formation. Uh-uh. This is straight ahead smash mouth football. Go with a motion here. Oreo going to pitch Edwards. Got a big block. Now he's to the corner. Midfield 45, 40, and all the way down to the Newcastle 36-yard line. Well, they let Pashadi lead the break that time, and a big rip of 22 yards for Dave Edwards and a first down for West inside Newcastle territory. That's a frightening look of your defensive back. Just a sweep to the right side, get some good lead blocking there from Pashadi, number 33, and uh, Edwards uses his fine speed to turn the corner and pick up 22 yards. And there's Central Bucks West sitting in Newcastle territory in the first possession of the ball game at the Newcastle 36. Corey Lemon must have felt like he was crossing against traffic that time with Pashadi leading the break. 230 pounder and only a junior. Pitch goes to Pashadi this time, cuts it upfield, slams inside the 30 and wallops it down to about the 28 yard line. Just talk about punishing, punishing, punishing. One of the things to look at here in the backs. So many times we look at a tailback lineup like six, seven yards behind the quarterback. Here you only see the back lineup at four yards behind. Everything is tight. It's hard to pick up who you're handing off to, and it's a quick burst to the line of scrimmage behind that mammoth offensive line. Which we will isolate from time to time. They ran behind Big Ben Carver that time, going to the University of Virginia. 
Second and two, a gain of eight for Shotty. You get the carry again. Up, nope. build play action. Oriole downfield looking incomplete. Pass intended for Sean Michael Janssen. Great ball fake that time. That's something we've always noticed over the years with the CB West quarterbacks and Orioles as good as anybody. It's a great play by Joe Coward. He comes over, sees where this ball's gone. He has the coverage, but extends and knocks it away. That's a nice, nice play by the cornerback, Joe Coward. Saved a touchdown probably because, I mean, everybody just bought Pashadi going into the line. Third and two. It's a power down to a power guy and a first down as he leaps forward to the 22-yard line. It's a gain of six. What a thrust they are getting up front right now. They ran behind Ben Carver again. Yeah, here they go. Well, you get the idea of the kind of confidence the Central Bucks West has. They got a second down and three. They throw in the second down and three. They've got that much confidence. They've got two more downs to get the three yards they're going to need. That's how much confidence they have in that running game. Carver's hey, coming out of the game. Yeah, it looks like he got dinged up in the shoulder area. They're going to look at him. That's... That is a developing storyline there. You hope that it's uh, kind of a burner and he can shake that off a little bit. First and 10. West, as you look at Mike Pettin, one of the uh, legendary coaches, he just came onto your screen there with a dark jacket on. Bags are down again. Yeah, you talk about Mike Pettin's career at Central Bucks West. He's the first head coach to win 300 games in the PIAA Quad A level. He's in his 32nd year as head coach. Dead ball, delay a game, five yards, beats him, first down. Ben Carver leaving the game is what led to that. Uh, they were late getting a play in. That does kind of get your attention when Mr. Carver is down to the sideline or off to the sideline with an injury. Kind of like taking two people out of the lineup instead of just one. Look at the tight formation here again. How tight they stay in the line of scrimmage. Pitch goes Edwards, has a big hole, has five, has ten, inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. It's a gain of 16 more. You know what I'm amazed at, too, is not only is that offensive line of Central Bucks West very big, and we're going to see it right here. Look how they fire off the ball. Look at big number 61. It's pulling guard for Central Bucks West. That's John Bear, and he's leading the way. These are big people, and they just fire off the ball, explode off that line of scrimmage. You talk about Edwards, he expected to start the season really at tight end. When Ortiz went down with an ACL, Edwards stepped in. All he did was have 963 yards of the season and seven touchdowns. Not a bad step in. First and 10, CB West playing keep away on this opening drive, which is now more than three minutes old. Pashadi rips into the middle. Still going, still rumbling to the five-yard line. It's a gain of six more. Took six guys with him along for the ride. Well, there's a guy you just cannot tackle above the waist. And, and we saw a couple of Newcastle uh, defenders try to do just that. Look at this. Shot, he's up top. Guy's trying to tackle him up top like that. He keeps the pistons pumping, moving down towards the uh, five-yard line. Inside the five, it'll be third and three from the five. There's a young man that's used to carry it off in 259 rushes for 1,733 yards this year. And all he had was 35 touchdowns. <laughs> Second and three from the five. And off the shotty again. Pushing, 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 and lunging forward close to a first down near that two-yard line. That's not what you call a real high-octane attack. It's productive, but it's kind of a drip-drip approach. Well, you know, it's this is the, the philosophy of Smash Mouth football is, you know, control the ball, control the clock. You know, part one is control the ball part two control the clock and uh, when you get into the red zone you want to come away with points so uh, you know so far Central Bucks West is uh, sticking right to their game plan working to a tee. Tenth play of the drive on third and one from the three. Pashadi leaps forward and touchdown now it's at the one. Just at the one he was close. He's right at the welcome mat. Right here. The key here, though, is you're throwing down the gauntlet and saying your defense is going to sit on the field for a long, long time against us. Over four minutes and 30 seconds already in this drive, and this is the first drive of the game. Now, last year, when we saw him in the state championship game against Upper St. Clair, you know, you talk about this power game. It's the gift that keeps on giving. The real gift starts giving in the third and the fourth quarter was yeah. something you talked about, Gary. I mean, USC last year, there was just 
nothing in the tank at the end. Well, you decimate a team, and especially if a team has people going on both sides, then the guys that are on the offensive side lose any any punch that they're going to have in trying to make your offense go. So it really has kind of a double whammy on you. Right. It's it's like it's like fighting a body puncher. I mean, you know, you're going to soften up the belly, and I mean, you re they really do beat up a team, and it's it's almost as if their opponents catch the uh, the CB West flu later in the game in the second half. They they're just a step slower. Ball at the one-foot line. Hand off Pashati. Touchdown, Central Bucks West. A lengthy 12-play drive. The gobbles up four minutes and 56 seconds. Make it an 11-play drive. you got to be impressed. I mean, they just say, here it is. Here it comes. And right over the top. And we'll finish it off on you right here. Pashati, monster man in this drive. Dave Edwards provided the quickness. Pashati provided the muscle. 6-0 West. Here comes the conversion attempt. Bob Tumulty. Pretty good kicker. He's had a lot of practice getting this job done. The holder is Bill Stone. Snap down, kick up, and it is good. 7-0-4 remain in this first quarter of play. Central Bucks West out to a 7-0 lead. It's been great having you with us all weekend long as the PAAA presenting in association with the uh, PCN welcoming viewers on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. WIPTF Productions in partnership with the PAAA and PCN all weekend long as we bring you the first statewide live broadcast of the PAAA football championships. And you are looking in on Mike Petton talking to his special teams right now. That was impressive, Gary. A lengthy drive to start the game. This is CB West football. It's not always the prettiest thing to watch, but it is relentless. 11 plays, 71 yards, 4 minutes and 56 seconds. Pashati with the one-yard plunge. That's probably been set a few times this year. In fact, 36 times if you're involving Pashati. And, you know, when you play CB West, uh, you know, Mike Patton, he just doesn't care. I mean, uh, teams throw everything at him. Uh, Eight-man fronts, nine-man fronts. Parkland, actually, in the Eastern Final, would line up in a nine-man front at the time. And uh, he, he just sticks with his game plan, says we can play smash-mouth football and probably, uh, you know, as good as anybody in the state, which uh, they've displayed throughout the year. So, uh, you know, he, he's not going to get out of his game plan talk about a Mike Petton you're talking about a guy that's won 310 ball games in his career and lost only 42 and is looking for his third championship here in the 90s Tumulty to kick off Newcastle trailing now seven to nothing we'll see go on offense for the first time high end over end kick fielded cool. by Patrick Kane the tight end trying to get outside and West is all over that at the 24 yard line Tackle is made for CB West. Andrew Elsing in on the stop. Let's have a look at the offense. Big offensive line. As we mentioned, Sean Runyon. Center is a good one. Nick Marmo is the real bell cow here. Literally 6'6", 300 pounds. Joe Cowart's had a great year, and Pat Kane, the tight end's a good one. And John Rosati, the halfback's been playing on an injured knee all season long. These guys have tremendous heart. Joe Cowart. He's kind of a riverboat gambler back there. He's tough. Coward on a keeper. Gets forward for about two or three yards. Before he runs into Greg Kinsel, a senior. This Newcastle team, this is the first time they've been back to the playoffs since 1987. First time they've been in the state championship game, and uh, they really have done a great job in the rebuilding process. Defensive front. Angelo Polina is a good one. He's always active. Brian Buckley seems like he's been at West now for about 10 years. A lot of these guys with playoff experience, and then there's uh, Dave Edwards doing double duty. Linebacker Ron Blumgren, his brother Travis of Penn State now. Pat Kane's got the pass, got a first down near the 39-yard line. A gain of 10. He is a good one, and Gary, we saw him in March on the basketball floor. This guy is... A super player and has really come on here late. We're we'll talking about some eye hand coordination. Watch this. A little quick turnaround, ball thrown behind him, picks it up, and then makes it into another play, gets it out near the 40 yard line. And first down for Newcastle right away. It's interesting here. It's so important for Newcastle to establish themselves in this drive. That's what CB West does. They say it's in your court now. You've got to match what we did. Justin Sheldon going to pitch it back to. Jeff Rosati, nice positive gain to about the 47-yard line, a gain of six. 
They're getting pretty good push on that offensive front here early, Mark. Yeah, that's right. Here you see Rosati take the deep pitch. Reads his block very nicely. This, this Bishotti kid, he plays, like I said, he has a lot of guts. He's playing with a partially torn ACL throughout the year. He rambled for over 619 yards. He's, uh, he's a tremendous halfback. I mean, one of those kid, kids that coaches love to coach. But handoff's going to be a uh, coward on a keeper across midfield, close to a first down near that 48 or 49 yard line. I think he's got it. You've got to like the play calling so far. The quarterback sneak, and we have a quick scamp around the outside, another quick pass, another quarterback sneak, and they're really mixing up their plays very, very well as Newcastle. First down, Red Hurricane to the 49 yard line. Head coach Gary Schooley had played at Newcastle, certainly knows the tradition, played on an undefeated team in 1971 and has brought the glory back. Motion man is Gordon Austin. Kane is back. Power back. Looks downfield. Got a man. It's Lemon and he can't hang on. Fans want interference. Not going to get that. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, that was a close one. Well, watch the play again. You can see. They want the interference call. It's not going to come back. Now, you're going to see the legs get tangled up. Both players going for the ball. Watch the great job by Joe Coward here. The quarterback to sidestep the rush. Steps up in the pocket. Ah, no, that's a good call. No contact. Good yep. non-call. Just better. lost his feet. Lost his feet. That's have why to these let... officials are doing the state championship game. We have to let the uh, defensive back at least have some kind of lane. An incidental contact like that. Kane, wow. double reverse handoff. This is Lemon slamming to the 44-yard line. Make that Gordon Austin. He's only 5'7". It's a guy who can get lost in the mail, but he has got some quickness. I'll tell you what, Newcastle runs this play with a lot of speed and precision. This is a you know, counter misdirection, and uh, it's, it's designed to uh, uh, confuse a, uh, an over-aggressive defense. And uh, they, they ran that very, very well. That, that's a fast-developing precision play. Good opening drive here. It's third and five now. Coward back on play action. Now onto the gun. Running for his life. Nowhere to hide. And down he goes. All the way back at his own 47-yard line. Give credit to the secondary on that one who really had all the receivers bottled up. There was nowhere to look. Right there he looks. Oh, nothing open. Now he tries to scamper. And now the front four takes over for C.B. West. Joe Wilson in on the sack for Central Bucks West. Also helping out Ryan Buckley. Brian Buckley. And Newcastle move the ball well, will be forced to punt. Pat Kane will kick it away now. Dave Camburn, one of the deep men, along with Sean Michael Janssen. Good kick by Kane. Fair catch called for by Janssen at around the 13 yard line. Well, Central Box West, here they come back out. Had the ball over five minutes. In that opening drive, Jed Donahue along with the coach, Gary Sutton, Mark Shuey. You look in on Gary Schooley there, the head coach at Newcastle, 11-3 and three coming into this game. Yeah, Gary Schooley uh, called that upset victory, a 13-7 victory over North Allegheny. It reminded him of uh, the, the glory days of Newcastle's football in the 1970s. He said Schooley was a 1971 Newcastle graduate. He played on Newcastle's 1970 team that went undefeated. He took over in 1995, his first year at Newcastle. They went 0-10, so he's got this program on the uptick in a hurry. Oriole, the quarterback. Play the motion, man. Pashati, big hole, 20, rumbling. 40, midfield, and still on his feet. Look at this. Pouring it on, 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Dustin Pashati. Oh, my goodness. 86 yards to glory <laughs> for Dustin Bashotti. And there's what CB West does. The mental aspect of pressure on you. Watch this. There's that front line opening up the hole, and he just blew. Oh, boy. A couple of good drive blocks there on the offensive line. And Bashotti, for a big man, this guy can move. Because look at this. Pat Kane has the angle on him. He went for the legs, which is proper tackling technique for a big guy like Dustin Bashotti. Yeah, Bashotti. He goes 235 pounds, but uh, he can really move that 235 down the football field, can he? Well, that has some coaches at the table writing some mail. Tumulty's kick is good. He hooked it right in there. Well, we've had a lightning bolt 
First drive went five minutes. This one, how long did it take him to run down the, the boundary there? <laughs> <laughs> Took him 15, 15 seconds. seconds. Yeah, with equipment. Seven carries, 114 yards. We have 343 to go in the first quarter. Dustin Pashani might be the real deal. What's he need? 254 yards for... Uh, a thousand this year? Two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. yeah. Well, he took a big swipe out of that in one swing of the bat, an 86-yard <laughs> run. 14 nothing. Central Bucks West. Well, you know, 254 yards in a ball game may sound like an awful lot. Yeah, and it is. But, uh, I mean, keep in mind, this is a Central Bucks West team that uh, uh, picked up over 500 yards on the ground last year right here in the Quad A championship game. So, I mean, this team, with the offense they run, with the personnel they have up front, they're fully capable of putting up huge numbers of offensive groundwork. Well, it's a team that averages close to 275 yards a game rushing the ball. So that's not uh, anything unusual here. And already they've staked two touchdowns in the early going and thrown the gauntlet straight in the face of Newcastle. We'll see what kind of moxie they have trying to overcome this. Their fans are really urging them on. That was something, an 86-yard run. High pop-up kick. Didn't catch a number, I believe, that was number 23. Jeff Grimm, or 23, you Greg say? Greg Kinzel came in, got through the wedge, and made a nice, nice tackle and a special team play there. 5'11", 195-pound senior. First and 10, Newcastle at the 28-yard line. There's your time remaining in the upper portion of your screen, 337. That's first quarter. Dustin Pashati just 86 yards. All's not bad for Newcastle. They had three minutes on their first possession. They just came away empty-handed. This one's not off to a promising beginning. Meeting the door was... Angelo Polina, 5'11", 190 pounds, and went headstrong right into Gordon Austin. Bang, bang. Loss of three on the play. So it'll be second and 13 now, as you see Mike Patton. He's going, eh, I like the start here. Not a bad situation. <laughs> it looks a lot like last year. Might have said to Dustin Pashada, you scored too quick. Well, I'll tell you what. You no, know, I'm only kidding. Central Bucks has not had a whole lot of close calls this year. We'll talk about the their lone close shave of the year. Double handoff. John Rosati. Positive yardage. Close to a first down. Up near the 38-yard line. That's, That's great. close. I think he's right at the chain. That's good. There. Excellent ball movement, and this misdirection is working so far. Yes, it is. This is what you have to do to... Uh, uh, take an aggressive defense off its game. And that time, Rosati hit the hole very, very nicely. Good play call, executed very nicely by the offensive unit. They pick up a first down on the play. Nick Sharo, good kickout block. He was number 64 in your screen that time. You look in on Joe Coward. Quick handoff this time to the fullback, that being Justin Sheldon, six foot, 190 pound junior. Got about a yard. This is a wall right here. I mean, this is an Iron Curtain look that uh, Central Bucks will throw at you. That's Brian Callahan, 6'3", 215. Well, Central Bucks West had a narrow 13-12 to 12 victory back on October 16th. And they beat North Penn, head coach at North Penn, son of Mike Penn. They run the same kind of program. Mike Penn, Jr., Quick handoff, and I believe that is going to be Gordon Austin in on the carry again. He gets lost in there. He's only five foot seven. Did you get the impression, man oh man oh, straight up the middle, you're not going to get a whole lot against the CB West defense tonight. That the kind of guile they've been using so far in the game, yeah. the little counter plays and so forth, is the answer. Yeah, the counters, the misdirections, and uh, equipment here. And I'll tell you what. Okay. You know, they're going to utilize Pat Kane as well. He's a great pass catcher. He's got some great hands. Talking about number 88, fine tight end. So, I mean, they've got some very good athletes on this squad that can obviously execute, uh, you know, a precision offense. And Pat Boy. Kane is the guy they'll probably be looking for in this particular play with a third down and five. Kane lined up in a wide receiver position. Coward back looking. Okay, okay. I got the screen set up. But West is all over it. And a flag goes down. That might be against Central Bucks West. That'll be interesting to see how this works out. Good misdirection. They had it set up well with Gordon Austin. 
71 red, ineligible downfield. Ineligible downfield. Who's beyond the line of scrimmage, four yards. Captain, captain. We have an that ineligible. That is a super play by Bill Stone downfield. right there. He's a senior. Play. A lot of tournament experience. And about three, or we three third down, and about 20. Caught oh, Nicholas Marmo downfield number 71 as an el ineligible receiver. Third, third and ten, or uh, fourth and about three. Well, this seems to be the uh, great debate. There's Gary Schooling. No, I can't tell. Was it behind the line of scrimmage? I got it right. Yeah, now now they're debating whether the ball was caught, uh, whether it was caught behind or in front of the line of scrimmage, this screen pass. I'll wait for the verdict on the field. I think they'll decline the penalty and take fourth down. There is no flag. Yeah, that will the negate. pass was behind the line right. of scrimmage. Passes behind the line of scrimmage. Fourth down. Passes behind the line no of scrimmage. At all. Yeah, right. The, the, uh, we can't have an illegal receiver downfield, so. Fourth and three, so that will mean they're forced to punt. Dropping deep for Central Bucks West, Dave Camburn, a sophomore. Also going back there is Sean Michael Janssen. And we have come timeout, Central Bucks West. Apparently they didn't have the right alignment on the field. Well, as we've been mentioning, it's uh, wonderful to have you with us all weekend long. PAAA presenting in association with PCN. All of our viewers on the Pennsylvania Cable Network, WITF Productions in partnership with the PAAA and PCN. This is our sixth year together here with the WITF production crew, and it's great to be back in Hershey for the first time here with the PAAA State Football Championship since 1991. They've done a great job here at uh, the Hershey staff. Scott Mullen, there's one of the first touchdowns right there. Dustin Pashotti, that's the short one. Yeah, yeah he's and got a... here's the real home run bomb. <laughs> one swing of the bat. Yeah, he's got two contrasting touchdowns. One one-yard popper over the middle, and this one, an 86-yard scamper around the left end. What you call the short and the long of it. Yeah, look at him sticking there. Huh? Big guy and showing some... Great acceleration in the open field. Some nimble footing, as it were, and uh, just a junior. Punt now by Newcastle. High punt by Kane. Johnson, that ball is down. I don't know if they gave enough room anyway to make the catch. There goes the West flag. has the football. That was a but pretty good find uh, that Newcastle was right there in front of him as he made the catch. That's a pretty gutsy fair catch decision by Sean Michael Johnson. Dustin Sheldon was right there. This will be a five yard penalty. Richard McCrellis, our lead official for this quad A game. All the officials have done a great job over the weekend. We haven't seen one controversy yet. Earlier this afternoon, in case you missed it, Mount Carmel with a resounding 44-7 victory in the uh, double A championship against Shadyside. Well, now they're debating, since he recovered it, where to put it. It's got to be a five-yard penalty. Here we go. Fair catch interference on red, 15 yards, Ooh, first out. 15-yarder that time. That'll take it all the way up to the 41-yard line. I'll tell you, you don't want to give this Central Bucks West team a short field. We saw how lethal their offense could be. A 15-second, one-play drive last time. Hey, the truth, Mark, I think a short field for these guys might be 100 yards. That's true. Hear a tractor in the background. Isn't that kind of ironic? <laughs> Mike Oriel. Here's the lead pull. There he goes again. Pashotti into the secondary. And he was almost gone, but a big rip to the 33-yard line. Pashadi well over 100 yards already with 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Mark, he is a load. There you see Pashadi takes the deep pitch, goes on the right side, left side sweep rather. Look, whole host of blockers out in front, and uh, he does a lot of this work himself. A shoe top saving tackle by Newcastle, or else Pashadi was off to his third touchdown in this quarter. Well, William Caparulo, a, a hero for the moment for Newcastle, by making that shoe top tackle, but 27 more yards packed on to Pashadi. And he's on a roll. First and 10, the ball all the way down to the Newcastle 32-yard line. Stay with a good thing. This time they got a yard and a half, and the new 
Newcastle fans saying that's a little more like it. You know, I haven't seen Ben Carver come back into this ball game. Have yet to see him. Went out on the first series. He's over on the bench still. Looks University like of Virginia signee. He's trying to loosen it up. Armor shoulder got dinged up. Big 310-pound tackle, all-stater. He'll be back, Mark. I was just found him over there on the Central Bucks West bench working things out. And we've come to the end of the first quarter of play. And Central Bucks West surgically, methodically, 14 to nothing. Used a long drive and a long run to take a two-touchdown lead as we make the turn. You said surgically and methodically, Jed, and, and, and that's exactly what's happened. You feel like Mike Petton over there going scalpel, knife, scissors. I mean, just takes you apart with the same thing over and over and over again. And the residual of it all is the fatigue factor that is going to wear on you as the game progresses. That's what we've seen over the years with Central Bucks West, especially in... Uh, this particular environment. Last year beat Upper St. Clair 44-20. We did one of the greatest games I've ever seen uh, finish-wise. Uh, North Hills beat them back in 1993, barely 15-14. That's when Eric Kasparowitz went in on a two-point conversion on the last play of the game. Yeah, on a fourth down and goal from the 27-yard line with the wind chill at about 19 below. No kidding. And, uh, yeah, North Hills somehow scored a touchdown to give Central Bucks West a heartbreaking defeat in the 1993 Quad A Championship game in Altoona. They also won the last time I was here in Hershey in 1991 against Erie Cathedral Prep 26-14. Gary, okay. numbers in the first half. Rather scary, most of it on the ground. How well, about all of it? First quarter, 184 yards for CB West, zero passing. That's about a normal game. Newcastle, 34 yards rushing, 12 yards passing, 46, not all that bad. Pashadi, 141 yards in the first quarter on nine carries. Double figures every time he touches the football. Ocean Man is Polina. And off Pashadi, ripping and slamming. Nope, it's a keeper for Oriel across the 30 to the 27-yard line and a gain of four. That'll create third and four upcoming for Central Bucks West. Ripper Mark? Down. That's Mike Oriel. He's uh, just a sophomore. He's a real great. good ball handler, great football player. And, you know, Mike Patton has a lot of confidence in Oriel to throw the ball. And like I said, in, in, in non-competitive situations where they, they may be ahead, uh, handily in a game they'll, they'll start throwing the ball they'll here's, open it up here's a down though mark where you normally would throw the ball for most teams third and what a long four possibly a short five this is probably a down where cb west is going to probably run the ball because they think of it in terms of two down territory all the time really jamming it up quick hitter and a first down i did not uh, i don't think that's the shoddy this time Thank you, guys. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you and you wonder Where why at, Central Bucks West plays this smash mouth type of football. It's very simple. Look at the holes this offensive right line is able to open up for uh, for the running back. Brian Buckley. He's 220 pounds. I guess that's a relative run. light load there. And when you can run block like that, why throw? You've got to get the feeling if we were watching a game in the 1940s, we had a chance to go back there and watch some of the ghosts. They'd be really pleased to see this kind of football. This is this harkens back to another era. This is Woody Hayes, Vince Lombardi type of football right here. You're just right on the same page there. Three yards in a cloud of dust. <laughs> what Woody Hayes say? Two things bad can happen if you put it yeah. in the air. There's three yeah, things that can happen with a pass. Out. Yeah, two of them are bad. I think you can uh, include Mike Pettin in that school of thought as well. As we mentioned, uh, a lot of thanks goes to Scott Mullen this weekend for the job that uh, he has done coordinating uh, all of the stadium crew. And the entire staff here at the uh, Hershey Entertainment and Resort Company creating the bowl atmosphere. Returning here to Hershey for the first time since 1991. And the PAAA presenting an association with PCN. We're welcoming viewers on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. First time ever that all four games have been broadcast live statewide over the entire weekend it's uh, been an honor to be part of this particular history making event Jed Donahue Gary Down. Sutton Mark Shuey and our entire WIT up production crew looking at Central Bucks West first and ten from the Newcastle 23 yard line and a 14 to nothing lead Full house backfield, jumbo look. This Dave Edwards, he's the quickest one. He's in the end, secondary to the five. Edwards, 
to the three-yard line. He stepped out there, went for the pylon, and almost got there. Boy, this guy's caught me quick to the outside. He's got hiccup quickness, and you'll find out here, Dustin Pashati and Buckley know how to block. Also, give a good kick out there for Polina. Yeah, Polina. And uh, and like I said, Pashati came out with some nice lead blocking. I'll tell you, you know, kind of a sugar and spice look. You got uh, the spice with Pashati, a hard-hitting run, and then you got the fast stuff of uh, Edwards. Short yardage, dial 33 to the goal line. Not in yet. Kind uh, of Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside look here, so to speak, Mark and Jed. You've got uh, one over the middle and one around the corner. Here's Mr. Over the Middle. Pashati diving for that goal line one more time. Doesn't quite get there, but has it very close. Take it down. The password here is inevitable. <laughs> We're at the half yard line, 14 to nothing, Central Bucks West. 10 10 left. Shot in the short man, quick handoff, nudging, 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 powering, touchdown, Central Box West. Dustin Pashani for the third time. 20 to nothing, Bucks. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Just like watching a battering ram at the gate, and eventually they get in. Look, push, push, in, and Pashati with touchdown number three. We've got 9.57 to go in the second quarter. Doesn't hurt that you have half a ton moving the pile before you get there. The line of scrimmage. Uh, that, that offensive Yowzer, line is are they so good. very impressive. And I mean, you're doing this without probably your, your well, definitely your best offensive line, Ben Carver. Dumblety on for the conversion. Plenty of practice. And it's 21 to nothing with 9.57 to go. Well, Newcastle, they've done some nice things on offense. Problem, they haven't seen it enough. Here's why. There you see Pashadi. He's just following the pile. Comes down. It's the second effort that gets Dustin Pashadi and Central Bucks West their third touchdown of this ball game. As you see, the faithful who have come up the turnpike to the Hershey Park Stadium. Well, the only fatigue factor that CBF West has to worry about so far, maybe at this rate, is Tumulty's leg kind of wearing out by the end of the game and not be able to kick the extra point, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> well, this is a big moment in this game for Newcastle. Oh. They know it. Gary Schooley would like to keep it away and well, I'll tell you what one plays for 86 yards by Pashati the rest of it is a little bit more well, this as advertised Newcastle lost three games this year to Norwin 1910 Shaler beat him 28 27 and uh, Seneca Valley a 16 9 winner over Newcastle and uh, Newcastle really dominated the fourth quarter in their loss to Shaler almost came roaring back. They're calling it the greatest fourth quarter in Newcastle football history. They controlled the ball for a full 10 minutes in that quarter. Uh, their total yardage, 158 to 12. They outscored the Titans 14 to nothing, but they still lost by a point. But the team came away feeling really good that they did not quit. That final 12 minutes, they put to good use and nearly pulled out what looked to be a lost cause. Seven plays, 59 yards on that drive, two minutes and 54 more seconds. Pashati with the one-yard plunge, his third touchdown of the game. And so far, you're looking at Newcastle. They've held the ball for three minutes. On the other side, you have a team that's already held it for nine. <laughs> Those are pretty scary T.O.P.s right there. Time of possession. Jeff Scrim, the deep man, got under it just a little bit. Oh! And crunched <laughs> at the 45. Did he hold on? I don't know if he did. Nope, he did not. Can't blame fumble him if he did. Central Bucks West didn't see a number there, Fumbles and the away. fumble. First and you got to feel day. for Qualen Davis here, a sophomore. As we're going to see this again. There's one where you want to learn how to wave very quickly, Good called a fair day. catch. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Qualen right. Davis comes up and he just oh. gets stuck hard. First down. And looking at the hit, we'll point him out because it's a whopper. Damian Smith, a junior, five ten, two oh five. And just what Newcastle did not want to see, the Central Bucks West offense back out onto the field now in glorious shape, first and 10 at the Newcastle 36. Mike Oriel, he's back, in a roll, looking, 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 has time, throwing deep down the middle, it's caught for a first down. Sean Michael Janssen inside the 10, all the way to the five yard line, a gain of 21. I'm sure Mike Petton will take that, but you can hardly help but think that maybe he's a little mad they covered too much territory too quickly. But look at this great pass. Eyes up the whole way, looking, rolling out, 
and then releasing. They say we could throw it through the air, too. Beautiful pass. I need to jump that by 10 more yards. Make that a gain of 31. First and goal at the five. Central Bucks leading 21 to nothing. Here, Oreo barking out the cadence. Here's Pashadi picking his way through the woods to the three yard line. Lots of tall trees and timber in there, Mark. You know, Mike Oriel just displayed that he can throw the football as a quarterback, uh, even though this is a ground oriented attack, heavily so. And uh, and Sean Michael Johnson, very good wide receiver as well, but he's their leading wide receiver, and he's got 20 catches on the entire season. That's less than two per game. Hey, guys. Let's play ball, okay? Can you hear some of that preventative officiating going on there? We've seen throughout the back weekend. Off where you belong. Come on. And the referees in Get there saying, hey, let's take care of it. Let's play the football. And that's the kind of thing that you want to see going on throughout the game. Second and goal from the three-yard line. Johnny oh, lined up. He's got three touchdowns already into the pile again. Well, Newcastle very taut in this particular situation. Thank you. Thank you. Back it off. Tackle was made for Newcastle on the bottom that time. Sapienza, six foot, 230 pound good gonna, linebacker. You're going to see a lot of collisions right down here along the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, you're right. Newcastle, very stingy here in the red zone. I mean, uh, Pashadi had to work for that last one yard touchdown plunge. I mean, he had to work that second effort is what got him in last time. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is tough real estate for Central Bucks West. Uh, a lot of heart displayed here by Newcastle inside the red zone. Newcastle giving up 13 points a game during the course of the season. They'll run Pashadi wide. One-on-one, -on -one, pushing, pushing. Touchdown, oh Central Box West. You can always tell where Pashadi is because you can see other uniforms moving with him. That's unbelievable. As we said, he moves with the speed of a line painter at times, but here's the line play. and Right down along the line of script. Look at that collision at the two-yard line. My, oh, my. And look at the leg drive from Bashadi all the way into the end zone and finally getting thrown down, but not until he scored. That's Bill Caparola, the outside linebacker, number 17 for Newcastle, who tried to come up and make a one-on-one -on -one stick on Bashadi, 235-pounder. And I'll tell you what, Caparola's going to feel that one. Hamilton on for his fourth conversion attempt. Bingo. 28-0. Central Bucks West. Hardly bucking a trend I couldn't resist with the pun there. Well, that's see it like again. moving a refrigerator up the stairs right there. <laughs> Here, <laughs> you lose. Look at his teammates there trying to push him into the end zone from behind as well. Anything to get that six on the board. Four plays, 36 yards, two minutes and two seconds added on to the time of possession. When you go back over there, touchdown so far, all four by Pashadi. First possession, 458, touchdown Bashadi. Second possession, 15 seconds, touchdown Bashadi. Third possession, two minutes and 54 seconds, touchdown Bashadi. Fourth possession off the fumble recovery here, two minutes and two uh, seconds, touchdown Bashadi. Four touchdowns, 28 nothing, still 752 to go in quarter number two. How much time so far for Newcastle? Three minutes, no score. seventh. If Berwick could get up to four in AAA nationally, why is this team seventh? It's been a question I've had for an awful long time about we'll how talk. Dave Kreider does a USA Today national yeah. poll. Uh, this team deserves a lot more respect than a uh, number seven look nationally. Marker down. Probably jump off sides a little bit. So far out of the 16 minutes and eight seconds we've had here in the first half, guys, CB West has had the ball nine minutes and seven seconds of it. Gives you an idea again of that time of possession and the wearing down of the defense that's taking place. Yeah, well, you know what, in that ball control offense that uh, CB West runs, they're, they're winning both elements of that. Five-yard penalty. Got the lead on the scoreboard, obviously, 28 nothing, and they're winning the game of the clock. They, they have time of possession, and they're just watching that clock melt towards halftime. 7.52 to go in quarter number two. 28-0 all CB West here in the Quad A Championship game from Hershey Park Stadium. Well, they came in heavily favored. They have played as advertised. And you wonder if they're the seventh best team in the country. That's what I was just saying. Who are the I... other six? 
I mean, I can understand how teams in Texas, maybe sometimes in California, but how does this guy have this team only seventh, and yet he'll put Berwick, who's in AAA in this state, up number one or number four nationally. This team's got all the tools physically. You've got to be impressed, Jed. They compare Mike Petton on the high school level to a Joe Paterno on the college level. Maybe one of the reasons why is the accentuation of the block and, and the beauty of the block. Blocking is the number one thing at CB West. You can see how it pays off. They're very clinical in their approach to this game. With the football, a scrim. Not much room to go as West really beginning to smell it now. The 23-yard line. That ball hit the turf again, but the uh, ball carrier ruled down by the officials. Oh, Gary Schooley. Uh, must have gotten a couple of gray hairs in watching that. It was right in front of him. Doesn't want to hand the ball to CB West once again at their own 20-yard line. We have to blow dust off the offense right now. It's been a while since we've seen them on the football field. Good tackle, oh. Justin McDonald. One possession in the game so far for Newcastle. We've got 7.43 to go until halftime. They trail 28 to nothing. Double handoff. Going to the outside is Austin, and he flies forward. Did he fumble again? I don't know if that popped out or not. Big hit by Damian Smith on the defensive line. He stayed home. He wasn't confused by the misdirection. Second down, second down. Number two. Gordon Austin, a 5'7". Ran right headstrong into Damian Smith. He's only a junior, and they say he's just a great prospect. Well, yeah, you, sh you saw it right there. I mean, he stayed home in the misdirection, didn't get confused, stood his ground, made a textbook tackle. That's good football from Damian Smith, number 32. Joe Cowart in a real mainstay. Quick handoff and a big hole for John Rossati. Well short of a first down. One of the things you see from Newcastle, nice quickness, quick bursts off the line here. Again, they should be. They're relatively fresh. The offense has only been out there one time. This being the second possession. But look at this. Nice quick burst. Brings it up to about a third down and three yards to go. Yeah, precision offense. They run fast, developing plays. Problem is right now you're down 28 points and time is not exactly on your side. Gary Schooley, the head coach of the Red Hurricane of Newcastle. The winningest program in the WPIL, looking at third and three. Howard back. Howard going to keep it himself. Has room, cuts forward, first down Newcastle. Boy, they really needed to move the sticks there. That is a, uh, a starting point. Joe Howard did a nice job of picking his way through. Watch this. He looks, he sees, he dances a little bit, picks his way through, and then dives for those first down markers. And Joe Coward showing you a little bit of courage right there from Newcastle. You don't get to this game, Mark, without having big hearts and without having a lot of skill. And this team has a lot of skill. That's exactly right. You know, you got to look at the job Gary Schooley has done just since he's been here since 1995. The team went 0-10 that first season. Here they are in the state title game. Huge hole for Justin Sheldon all the way down to the Central Box 40-yard line. A gain of 26 yards. And a first down for Newcastle, and he almost took that one to the house. Well, the last time they had the ball, they used it for three minutes. Now they're doing it again. Beautiful hole. It's up in the middle, and a run for daylight here. And Gary Schooley's got to have a little smile crease his face here as his team's showing him something positive. Ball at the 40, first and 10. 540 left. We're in this second quarter of play. Central Bucks West on the lead at 28 0. All four touchdowns for Dustin Pashadi. 1-1-2 one, one, and 86 yards. Big Coward back, looking, throws, pass, dropped by Sheldon. Sheldon, rather, at the 32-yard line. I'll tell you what, uh, Coward did a real nice job in just selling yeah, that. Walter. I think Coward got caught in between running it and passing it there, and the, the throw almost looked like an afterthought. As you see the rollout here, great job of holding on to the football, fooled everybody. Now watch, it just kind of throws it behind the receiver a little bit, and it's incomplete. Tough plays. I think he was thinking about running there, Mark, and instead changed his mind at the last moment. Great job by the camera crew. It started out, we were looking right into the eyes of the linebacker from Central Bucks West, Greg Kinzel. Great job by our WITF camera crew all weekend. They do the best job out there that you ever see. Quick hitter that time for Gordon Austin. 
As he slithers to the 35-yard line, a gain of five. It'll be fourth and five upcoming now, or third and five, rather. Again, good for Newcastle. Count, good counter action as the runner Austin gets through there, and you see Gary Schooley on the far side. I'll tell you, these Newcastle kids run a, a fairly complex offensive system. I mean, you know, there's a lot of movement, a lot of misdirection, a lot of ball handling from the quarterback, Coward. They, they run it flawlessly, and they run it with speed and precision. This is this is a nice, nice offensive uh, scheme that Gary Schooley has. Third and four, Newcastle now with 441 left. Quick hitter at Shell down again into the secondary. A first down and more and pops it to the 18 of Central Bucks West. If this was the opening drive of the game, Gary Schooley would be absolutely ecstatic because he'd want his team to be controlling the clock, running the ball, getting first downs. That's what they're doing. But when you're down 28 points, it's a little harder. But at least it's something positive right now that they can start to build on for the second half. Big 17-yard pickup for Justin Shell 190-pound junior. Lays the leather on you, too, when he puts you down at the final end of that run. Sheldon, a gain of 17 to the 17 officially. First and 10. Coward under center. Back looking. Going to roll now. He's going to keep it. Runs into Brian Buckley. Buckley's a hammer at the outside linebacker spot and gathers him up for no gain. Also in on the stop for West that time, Angelo Polina. Yeah, watch number nine here. Brian Buckley comes in from the left side of your screen. He kind of pinches in, fought off the block. Just a nice job by the outside linebacker, Brian Buckley, to contain the quarterback, Coward, because he had a running lane, and he saw it, tried to take it, but Buckley shut it down. Second and nine at the 16-yard line. Marker down. 81 red. Frank. Frank. That's against Pat Kane. You heard him uh, lining up in the neutral zone there, so that'll go against Newcastle. Five more yards the other way. There's your time remaining. There's Pat Good Kane. Ball. I'll tell you what, Gary, we Go loved his look in March. Oh, this guy is a yards. great basketball player. Newcastle, uh, one of the Western Only favorites that, this year. Wait in wait they wait really got a good team. Ball. David Young. I know a lot of people are watching, and they expect to be back to try and win it. They were runner-up last year to Harrisburg High. Back goes Coward. Throws it to Sheldon. Nobody home. He's got a clear path. Cut back 5-4. First down and goal to go at the 4 for Newcastle. And Coward is very clever back there, making things happen. Well, watch what he does. He looks to the right. He fakes, looks to the right, draws the defense over. Now throws back in the opposite direction of the screen pass. And watch Caldone. Heads off only one man to beat to the goal line. A well-conceived play as he gets the overcharging defense caught in that uh, little screen pass. I'll tell you what, that's great. That's a great call and great execution. Cowart really sold the pitch, didn't he? He really sucked in the defense. That was a great job by Joe Cowart, the quarterback, to sell that play. That's why they won the West. That's a pretty drive right here. Cowart back, looking, looking. Now he's flushed out. He's still flying it around. And Accepted a pass he should not have thrown. That's one you want to throw as far out of the end zone as you can. He just, he was so eager to make something happen there that an ill-advised pass and it gets intercepted. You talk about taking the wind out of the sails after a wonderful drive. Yeah, and he knows it too. Joe Coward right. standing at the 30-yard line, hands on hips, head down right now. But Coward getting a whole lot of pressure in there. An ill-advised throw picked off by Brian Callahan of Central Bucks West. Here, you're going to get it from field level. Throws off his back foot, ill-advised. Call a hand. The linebacker another. on the outside steps in front of the receiver for the turnover. They went to that play once too much, too often. Callahan made them pay. Nine plays, five more minutes out of the time of possession, but you walk away empty-handed and get a few new caps. Big hole, Pashadi rumbling and stumbling to the 36-yard line. What a player he is. Mr. and Mrs. Pashadi, you are going to receive mail from around the country. Well, I believe uh, he may he may just get that 2,000 yards here tonight. He needed 254 coming in. He had well over 100 in the first quarter of this ball game, and there he ripped off another long one. Dustin Pashadi with four touchdowns this evening already. There's Mike Pettin. That goes Oriel. He's got a man wide open downfield. He threw to the wrong one. In, out of bounds. 
Good play that time for Jeff Scrim, but Sean Michael Janssen was way downfield. The pass intended for Chris Ortiz. This is a tough, tough pass to throw when you're rolling the opposite direction for a right-hander. They're trying to set up and get your shoulders square, and he throws just a little bit behind the receiver. And uh, good play down there by Newcastle. And Jeff Scrim yeah. came out of his cornerback spot. I'll tell you what, Oriole just put a little too much air underneath that one, gave Scrim a chance to come over and nearly pick off that pass. 2.46 to go in the opening half, and a marker comes down again. I wonder if it's a neutral zone. We've seen two of those so far. Let's see. Go White. Yep, that's exactly it. Told, up off sides. I'm told Dustin Pichotti is already up to 172 yards. Good ball. So he needs about 82 in. more to yeah. get over 2,000. He's already ripped off an 86-yard run. Here's that pass play that was Second nearly down. picked off. See, Oreo double running, stick, throws across double his stick. body. Throws off the back foot, too. They never really got his feet set. You can yeah. see the result. They're almost an interception. Off screen, there was uh, Sean Michael Janssen who was downfield, but it's easy for me to pick up when I'm uh, <laughs> up here. It's a much better up. look than down there. You know, it'd be easy to play quarterback up here. <laughs> Quick hitter, Dave Edwards, pick hole into the secondary. Look out. He's bringing a 30. Home at the 20, 10, 5, and that's a touchdown for Dave Edwards. 70 yards. In an absolutely resounding performance in the opening half. 34 to nothing, Central Bucks West. Watch this. Look at Blade that. hand off and then head for daylight. And Dave Edwards says, I like the looks of that goal line. Nice for point only. I'll tell you what, the delayed handoff is especially lethal when you have the speed of a guy like Edward because the, the, the push that Central Bucks West gets from their offensive line of scrimmage pushes the Newcastle front four back on their heels. After oh, Edwards geez. gets past the linebackers, it's clear sailing. All oh, children out of the pool. 35 to nothing. Central okay. Bucks West. Two plays, 28 seconds, 70 more yards, and this is a clinic. It's just a, a flat-out clinic. What else could you say? They're the Central Bucks West fans. Yes, we're used to this. 30 wins in a row if this holds up. And right now, it's the safest bet in the house. Kind of looks like an opera crowd over there. It's very blasé at the moment. It's very nice that we're scoring, guys, but... Uh, uh, winning is a habit at Central Bucks West. You heard the referees. They were discussing the mercy rule, which comes into play after halftime. 35 to nothing Mike, is our score. Head coach Mike Patton picked up win number 300 with a 28 to 13 victory over Norristown back on September 25th. We'll talk about that later on in the game. It was very special to the players of this team to pick up that win for their head coach. This isn't a team that's just come around in the 90s either. They won 55 straight games in the 80s, uh, finally being beaten by Cardinal O'Hara. And, you know, Mike Pettin in true fashion said, you know, I'm kind of glad they beat us. He said they deserved to beat us. They took it easy on us. You know, he's a really hard-nosed guy, but the kind of guy that his kids really come to play for every night, kind of filling in what you said there, Mark. Well, no quad A team has gone back-to-back. That is changing. This is one of the best teams I've seen in the state finals. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah, you know, Dustin Elliott with it to the 32-yard line. Newcastle, uh, you, I've got to just, agree with uh, you, Jed. They get lost in the power. You know, the power of Central Bucks West. And this Newcastle team, a game team. They've done a lot of good things this evening, but they've come away empty-handed. They get lost when you look at Central Bucks West out there. Uh, Don't be ashamed because you're playing a legend right now. It's yeah. a legend in the making. This is as good as anybody can play in, a, in an opening half. I'm looking down the list of uh, the previous quad-A champions. We've seen them all too, Mark. There's That's nothing right. that compares to what we've seen in this first 24 minutes. You know, North Allegheny had a club. Uh, Cumberland Valley's 92 team was a, a dynamo. <laughs> McKeesport, Downingtown in 96, uh, but Boy, oh boy. The, only, the, the 96 Downingtown here. would be one. Maybe. Dan Ellis, a quarterback, and Arlen Harris, a tailback. That was a they're lethal down, but combination. But their down guys are nowhere close to, yeah. to this as far as the experience and the power that is involved. Well, and, and none of them scored every possession. Five possessions in this game so far. Five scores, 35 <laughs> points, unless you go for two. I don't know how you beat that. Yeah, there's no shame in getting knocked around by a team like this. This is a powerhouse here. 
They're street fighters here in Newcastle. Pounded yeah. in there. There's one of the reasons why. This guy's five foot seven. You gotta like this guy, Gordon Austin. 160 pounds, and he's in there first down. chewing it up as best he can for a first, first down. down five for seven, the 44. Yeah, Three. five seven, 160. And look at the heart of this guy. He's you know, down, follows right. his block very nicely. Takes a tackler head on. You know, okay. no quit. And that, you know what? That can sum up the Newcastle season in two words. No quit. These guys have a ton of heart, and that's what got him here to Hershey. All right, Gary, coach, right now I got to tap in. It's 35 nothing. You, you know, it's beginning to dawn on you at this point that. You are out manpowered. Well, that's absolutely right. And all you're trying to do again, find a way to score, and they might be trying right here. He is tough, I'll tell you. Gordon Austin, 5'7", 160 pounds. You've rolled some yards here in the second quarter. You've had eight minutes of possession time. Problem is, you've come away empty-handed twice. You were knocking on the door down there. It's just too little when you're looking at a steamroller at you on the other side. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you get down into the red zone, which the Newcastle did on their last possession. Uh, you know, they came away with no points on the turnover. You know, but the knowledge that Central Bucks West, when they get the football, they score. I mean, you just can't keep up with that all night. Joe Coward under center. And they still have uh, three timeouts to play with. Austin running well. Big hole has five. Has ten and another first down to the 35-yard line. Gordon Austin looking a little bit more like Steve Austin right now, the $6 million man, as he rounds the corner for another first sweep. Down. Take a look. I'll tell you what, Austin, 165 pounds, looking for sick here. With collision between him and Blomberg, and I'll tell you what, Blomberg at 195 got the worst of that. Yeah, Ron Blomberg, his brother Travis, by the way, Mark, is in the uh, secondary mix of Penn State and is the scout team option quarterback for Joe Paterno, and he's got a nice future, only a junior. He was a quarterback a couple of years ago, a team that went all the way to the Eastern Final, I might add, before losing to that Downingtown team that we just talked about. Yeah, that was that was an incredible team, the Downingtown team of 1996. Like we said, with Dan Ellis, who is now in Virginia. Arlen Harris, also Virginia. in Virginia. Ben Carver tonight will be joining them at Virginia. I'm impressed with how hard the... Uh the kids run right now from Newcastle, especially yeah. Austin. I mean, Austin lays a lick on you at the end of every run. And, and you've got to be impressed with the heart and soul of this team. But as impressed as you are with them, the other side's just been sterling throughout the evening. What hey, I'll, I'll tell you what this team has done for the whole town of Newcastle. You know, the, the, we talk about a team and its community, and, and the team and the community here are one, Newcastle and this football team. They have adopted this football team. There's a love affair. The week before the WPIL championship game, Newcastle Athletic Director Angelo Fortunato got to his office at 7.30 in the morning, found 20 adults standing in line waiting to buy tickets for that championship game. Pat Kane on the catch, still going all the way inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. It's a gain of 18 and a first down for Newcastle, Mark. And he, and he told these adults, he said, hey, you guys are waiting in line for tickets here. Uh, don't you know that there are 60,000 seats in Three Rivers Stadium? You're probably going to get a seat. And they said, yeah, we know. We just want to make sure we're there. That's the enthusiasm that this town has displayed for Newcastle football in 1998 as we look at Joe Coward hooking up with Pat Kane, his favorite receiver. They're well-conceived offensive principles for this Newcastle team. You've got to be impressed. University of Toledo and uh, Connecticut have looked at Kane as a football player, but he's probably climbing the charts a little bit as a senior. If he could go to 250 or 260, he would be on a lot of radar screens at the next level. Well, he just might, too. He, with that frame... I'd be able to put some weight on him in the college ranks. Pat Gary, Kane. you really liked this basketball well, game an awful lot, uh, as you did with Newcastle last year. You've got David Young, who's recent signee, going to Xavier, and they are the Western favorite in quad A on the hardwood. Well, Pat Kane's got to be wondering what happened. He runs into a, a steamroller in Harrisburg High last year to put on a clinic over here in the arena next door, and now he says, I come back in here and I get to see CB West, and they're doing the same thing to me. What the heck's going on? <laughs> That's right, he's staring at the outside of the building where he played last March. Sure, he's State willing Finals to try, the, try his luck at a third trip down here, Gary. Well, he'll give it a good long shot in there, one of the favorites out west this year. And I'll tell you what, to get here and play in these games is no small bit of change either. Well, they reversed a lot of bad luck recently. Coward, oh, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Down he goes in an undertow at the 24, and another loss, and... They're going to have to burn a timeout with 33 seconds to go in this opening half. Brian Buckley, the linebacker, comes shooting through on the blitz. Just got a coward by the jersey. Good enough to slow him up and 
scored a sack. They got a lot of weapons. They sure do. <laughs> well, they've been able to find Kane in that little seam pass a couple times tonight. You would think that maybe they come back to that again. Uh, that's been covering for 12, 13, 14 yards every time they've thrown it to him. So look for him to maybe come back and find Pat Kane right there in the middle. You're Mike Pettin. Let me and you play up to your potential in this environment. How gratifying is that? I mean, you still know you've got a second half, but that has to be, as a coach, one of the greatest feelings in the world when you take a team, one that is much ballyhooed, one that is much help publicized, and then just puts on an absolute clinic. Well, there's two thoughts that go with that. Number one, you live for the moment when your team steps to another level. Tonight, Mike Pettin's team may have stepped to another level. One of the raps on during the season was they lost focus every now and then. That certainly could not be said here this evening. But the second thing, knowing Mike Pettin, what he'll do the second half, he'll go in and find something at halftime they haven't done well. Probably a missed block here, a missed block there. The kids will be absolutely astounded. But he'll say, the second half, guys, we want to bring this thing home in style, and that's what he'll talk about. Well, he called a timeout to work things over on his defense, and obviously, whatever message he did, uh, it got through. <laughs> Newcastle with one timeout remaining now is facing third and long, about 15 or 16 yards. It's all the way back at the 24. Clock continuing to go, 15 seconds. They're going to try and get, they know they have the timeout, and it throws it incomplete. They'll have one more crack at it. Fourth and 16 now from the 24. The problem that you have is your offense has been perfect the first half. You've had five possessions, five scores, and so now what he's saying to the defense, you've got to match the offense's yeah. intensity so far, and maybe he doesn't feel that that's been happening to this point in the game. Yeah, that may be the sticking point right now. I mean, if there is a burr in the saddle of Mike Patton right now, which, you know, it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't appear there, there are many problems. But, yeah, you're right. Uh, Newcastle has moved the ball fairly liberally between the 30s. Purchase expect mistakes, but strive for perfection. And there it is. Mr. Pettin's message may have gotten through fairly clearly on these last three downs. Angelo Paulina on the sack, change of possession, two seconds left to go. And well, if you're looking for perfection as a head coach, Mike Pettin may have just found some of it in that opening 24 minutes. As good a football team as I've seen in this environment, Mark, in our state. Yeah, I, I echo those thoughts completely, Jed. I mean, this is just a dominating performance. And I'll tell you what, this is a this is a darn good Newcastle team that's getting knocked around here at the Hershey Park Stadium because uh, you know New, Newcastle got uh, fought through the WPIAL uh, had a couple of huge wins throughout the season I mean you know we talk about that uh, that big early season win against North Allegheny beat uh, beat the North Allegheny team 13 to 7 that kind of put a stamp on this team and uh, they, they rode that all the way to Hershey but, uh, wow what a buzzsaw they've run into here in CB West Mike Oriole will go to a knee, and that's it for the first half. Three possessions for Newcastle in the first half. Ten minutes and 31 seconds. But the most important number it shows on the board, they have none. 35 for Central Bucks West. We've come to halftime. Central Bucks West on their way to gold in quad A. Perfection. 35-0 Bucks playing very much like a top 10 team nationally and maybe even better, maybe top five. We go to break. We'll be back with more after this. The PIAA is a Pennsylvania nonprofit corporation organized on a membership basis. Membership includes most of the public and many private high schools in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The PIAA develops and enforces rules which are authorized by the member schools to regulate interscholastic athletic competition. The PIAA was formed in 1913 by a group of high school principals to establish uniform rules, eliminate abuses, and place interscholastic athletics in the overall context of secondary education. The purposes of the PIAA are defined in Article 2 of its Constitution. They are to organize, develop, and direct an interscholastic athletic program which will promote, protect, and conserve the health and physical welfare of all participants, to formulate and maintain policies that will safeguard the educational values of interscholastic athletics and cultivate the high ideals of good sportsmanship, and to promote uniformity of standards in all interscholastic athletic competition. 
The PIAA believes that the student athlete is best served by a system which emphasizes the amateur, educational, and character building aspects of high school sports, a system which recognizes that athletics is not the driving force, but rather that students are in school primarily to obtain an education. The membership of the PIAA consists of approximately 1,300 schools, divided almost equally between senior high schools and junior high middle schools. Of that membership, approximately 150 are private schools. Nearly 250,000 students participate in interscholastic athletics under the PIAA each year, placing Pennsylvania seventh in the United States for the 1997-98 school year. The four major areas in which the PIAA currently operates are the following. Establishment and enforcement of rules governing the eligibility of high school athletes to participate in interscholastic athletics. These include rules for academic performance, attendance requirements, transfer students, pre-participation physical evaluations, age and amateur status. Organizing and operating 27 post-regular season playoffs and championships in 10 girls sports and 31 post-regular season playoffs and championships in 11 boys sports. Adopting the playing rules for each sport under its jurisdiction, with the exception of bowling, golf, girls lacrosse, rifle and tennis, all other playing rules adopted by the PIAA are published by the National Federation of State High School Associations, of which the PIAA has been a member since 1925. Registering and training officials to officiate at contests in which the PIAA member schools participate. Nearly 13,000 officials are currently registered with the PIAA. The PIAA's principal source of revenue is the sale of tickets to its playoffs and championships. Gate receipts enable the PIAA to operate without taxpayer financing. The PIAA also provides services to its members on a day-to-day -day basis through its headquarters in Upper Allen Township, Cumberland County, near Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. The PIAA assists member schools and families by providing the student-athlete with opportunities for achievement. You're watching PIAA Championship Football on PCN, the Pennsylvania Cable Network a public service of Pennsylvania cable television companies. PCN is supported in part by your local cable TV company. Live coverage of the 1999 Pennsylvania Farm Show begins Saturday, January 9th on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. Watch the championship rodeo, line judging, horse and pony pulling contests, Chief to Shaw competitions, and many other events capturing the flavor of Pennsylvania's premier agricultural showcase. Around-the-clock coverage of the 1999 Pennsylvania Farm Show begins January 9th on PCN. Visit factories, museums, and other interesting places in Pennsylvania every week on PCN. A PCN tour takes you inside Pennsylvania's industry and history. PCN tours Wendell August Forge. Craftsmen at this Grove City operation have been handcrafting metal giftware since 1923. Sunday night at 8. This week on PA Books, Jim O'Brien, author of We Had Em All the Way, the story of Bob Prince, former sportscaster for the Pittsburgh Pirates, Sunday night at 9. PCN profiles Pennsylvania State Treasurer Barbara Hafer, Sunday night at 10. You're watching PCN, the Pennsylvania Cable Network, a public service of Pennsylvania cable television companies. PCN is supported by Suburban Cable TV, serving cable subscribers in Ben Salem and the Delaware County. Homework help on PCN airs throughout the school year. During this live two-hour interactive program, students in grades 1 through 12 may call in to ask math and science questions. State certified teachers will actively work through the problem with the student. So what's 6 times 8? 48. 48. And what is 3 times 10? 30. Homework Help on PCN airs Sundays at 5 p.m. Montgomery County Community College is offering college credit courses for the 1999 spring semester on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. Time to Grow is an introductory course on child growth and development from birth through adolescence. 
Discovering Psychology examines the fundamental principles of psychology, such as behavior, intelligence, and therapies. Living with Health focuses on fitness, diet, illness, injuries, and substance abuse. Its Strictly Business is an introduction to the world of business on a national and international scale. Faces of Culture is a cultural anthropology course studying the structure and process of culture. The American Adventure details the historical periods from Colombian contact to the Civil War and Reconstruction. Destinos is an introduction to Spanish, teaching speaking, listening, and comprehension skills. And the Western Tradition, a history course spanning the Middle Ages through the Renaissance. These telecourses begin Monday, February 8th on PCN. To enroll, contact Montgomery County Community College at 1-888-636-MCCC. The Pennsylvania Cable Network's commitment to public affairs reaches beyond television. PCN's homepage puts you in touch with state government. PCNTV.com provides citizens with information about PCN's programming. Users can access our nightly program schedule, browse PCN Vision, or check out information on PCN's weekly tours, books, and profiles. Through PCNTV.com, you can also access legislation, find out when hearings are scheduled, or send email to your legislators. The home page provides users with links to dozens of worldwide websites relating to Pennsylvania public affairs. The PCN homepage is free and available to anyone with access to the World Wide Web. Our address is www.pcntv.com. The Pennsylvania Press Club is a monthly luncheon series featuring key lawmakers, newsmakers, and policymakers. Luncheons are held on the fourth Monday of the month at the Tuesday Club in Harrisburg and can be seen in their entirety on PCN. Next month's Pennsylvania Press Club luncheon will feature Bill Giles, chairman of the Philadelphia Phillies, Thursday, January 25th at 9 p.m. Check PCN's website for more information and upcoming luncheon guests. You're watching PCN, the Pennsylvania Cable Network, a public service of Pennsylvania Cable Television Companies. PCN is supported by Adelphia Cable Entertainment, serving cable subscribers in Bethel Park, Mount Lebanon, Mount Oliver, and West Mifflin. Do you have a question you want answered? What has been done to the people purchasing this dump steel, if anything, and do we know who these folks are? How much money are these HMOs paying to these legislators? Leaders, journalists, policymakers, and pundits take your calls on PCN's call-in program. The Pennsylvania Cable Network, giving viewers a choice. Call in to PCN Thursday nights at 7. PIAA Championships exclusively on PCN. This is PCN's scheduled coverage of PIAA Championship events for 1999.
This game is paid for by PCN and your local cable TV system. the Hershey Park Stadium, your host for the 1998 BIAA State Football Championships. What we have just witnessed over the opening 24 minutes is probably the best football team in the 11 years of this tournament in Quad A. BIAA presenting in association with PCN. Viewers on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. First time historical that we have gone statewide for this particular tournament and our return to Chocolate Town. Some of the numbers, it's all slanted one way, as you would expect. How did we get to 35 to nothing? Well, Central Bucks West, 313 yards. Dustin Pashati, 15 carries for 172, 86 of which went on one run. And Dave Edwards had a 70-yard run, five carries for 133. Newcastle, 148 total yards. They've shown some spunk, but they're just uh, not enough manpower here. The interception by Joe Coward stalled their deepest drive of the football game. Mark, uh, some of these first half highlights will start and accentuate the offensive front for Central Bucks West. Yeah, we're as good an offensive line as you're going to see on the high school level. Yeah, those gaudy offensive numbers, they're the product of what you're seeing right now. A good push up front off the ball, off the line of scrimmage. These guys are just blowing it out up front. And here we're going to see the first touchdown of the ball game. This is Dustin Bashadi, a one-yard plunge. Caps an 11 play, 71 yard drive at the 704 mark of quarter number one. Much more to come for Central Bucks West. Watch this. Bashotti takes the handoff, starts the sweep left, changes hands with the ball, and a couple of guys have the angle on him. And he's going to go 86 yards. A potential tackler tries to dive. That's how you have to tackle a 240 pound Dustin Bashotti. You got to get him low, but look at the footwork down the sidelines as Pashadi makes it 14 to nothing with 343. The 343 mark a quarter number one. There we go again, Pashadi's third touchdown. This is a one yard plunge to make it 21 nothing early in the second quarter. And Mr. Pashadi, or Mr. Touchdown if you will, another TD on a two yard plunge. Look at Pashadi, 240 pounds, just pulling his way into the end zone. That was a four play, 36 yard drive, took two minutes and two seconds off the clock. Then, final touchdown of the first half of play. This is Dave Edwards, little sugar and spice action. Some quickness to the outside. Dev Edwards gets a block and he's gone 70 yards for Paydirt. That occurred at the 233 mark of quarter number two as Dave Edwards gives Central Bucks West the commanding 35 to nothing lead. All CB West highlights in this first half of play of the Quad A championship game from the Hershey Park Stadium. 35 nothing CB West over Newcastle at the half. 
check in with Gary Sutton with the executive director of the PAAA, Mr. Brad Cashman down on the field right now. Gary? Thanks a lot, guys. It is truly my honor to have Brad Cashman, the executive director of the PIA, here with me at halftime. And Brad, first of all, congratulations on an outstanding tournament. It has to be a very, very gratifying weekend for you and your staff. This has been a great weekend. Of course, the weather's cooperated tremendously, but this is simply a, an event this year. It's a bull atmosphere. We're very pleased with the things that Hershey has done. They put on a great show for us. And, of course, we had some fine football games for this weekend, so we're very happy. Brad, I know in addition to all the things going on this weekend, you've been involved in a lot of meetings here. Uh, the Board of Control has been in session. I know there's been a lot in the newspapers and the media about all that. Tell us a little bit about what's been going on as far as addressing some of the regulations or some of the suggestions for regulations that's been passed down by the legislature. Well, we started off on Thursday night with a policy review committee meeting in which the review committee went through each of the 18 recommendations from the Senate, Re uh, Senate uh, committee, special committee, and took a look at those and decided where they should pigeonhole each item. We looked at four general categories, constitution, bylaws, rules and regulations, and policy. The Board of Control then met on Friday morning at 7.30 a.m. until approximately 11.30 and again this morning. And as a result of those meetings, we have a special Board of Control meeting scheduled for Saturday, January 9th, in which the entire Board of Control is going to look at each item and decide how to best handle those recommendations, which ones are certainly doable and feasible, which ones we're going to have some difficulty implementing, if not impossibility, and possibly, uh, possibly implementing at all. The uh, one thing that I think is important to note is that some of the recommendations do implicate the Constitution, and as most people understand, constitutional amendments can only be made by a vote of the member schools. Mm -hmm. Brad, one of the things that certainly people are thinking about this weekend, we've read in the paper, uh, the call for your resignation, the Board of Control, have you gotten a feel from them this weekend on where they stand on that particular issue? I think the Board of Control made it very clear that I have their confidence. Uh, they ha they are confident in the job the executive staff has done and, the, and their executive director. Uh, we are moving forward with the fact that we're still going to be taking care of business as usual. Uh, certainly these recommendations that the Board of Control is going to take very seriously and those that, of course, we, uh, we can implement and will better the organization, we certainly will do so. But uh, as far as the Board of Control is concerned, this has been a weekend in which they have given me a vote of confidence without any question at all. Brad, one of the things that I saw in the paper the other day, you were, you were called arrogant. We've known you for a number of years. We know you're pretty confident. I don't know if arrogant's quite the word we would use to describe you for the people of Pennsylvania. Is arrogant a word that describes you? I don't think arrogance is a proper term at all. I think uh, I think confidence is one of the things that I have not lacked. Uh, I've been confident as a, as a student athlete, both in high school and in college. I've been confident as a coach, as an official, and certainly my confidence administrator, I think, speaks for itself. And I know you're one of the guys here that's always set good parameters for us at the state championships in terms of knowing what you can do and what you can't do, and I think maybe that ruffles some feathers now and then. Well, every time, anytime you tell someone no, uh, they're going to accuse you of being a lot of things. And uh, one of the things that we try to do is tell people no in a polite, professional way. We would say a lot of yeses to a lot of people, but occasionally you have to say no. When you have to say no, that's when you get uh, the name calling. So we try to do our job the best we can, and uh, if the answer is no, the answer is no. Well, Brad, I know there's a lot of rough spots that go on sometimes. Everybody's going to have their peaks and valleys, and there's always going to be some things to improve on. But certainly, as you look around at this championship tonight and what's going on throughout the weekend, you can be nothing but proud of your efforts. Again, a class job by you, your staff, and all the volunteers. Thank you, Gary. We have a great staff, and I want to give credit to uh, not only my staff. I have, of course, uh, Bob Lombardi, the associate director, L.A. Hopkins assistant, Melissa Nash, our new assistant, did a great job for us in six months with us. Our support staff in the office, Doris Hobbs, Bev Owens, Sherry Dean, Linda Rudisil, Anita Fox, and uh, Deb, uh, Deb Alford. They've all done a great job uh, throughout these uh, very difficult months, and I want to thank them very much from the uh, bottom, bottom of my heart. And Brad, it all starts at the top with leadership, and it's an honor to talk to you. You keep providing the leadership that really makes the PIA move. Thank you, Gary. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. And now back up to Jed and Mark. All right, 35 nothing as we get ready to start this uh, third quarter, and we're delighted to have the chairman of the board of the Hershey Entertainment and Resort Company, Mr. J. Bruce McKinney. You're going to sit in with us here for a little while. How are you, yeah, sir? I'm just great. It's a great night get for on football. The stick here. Wait, hang on just a second. I think you're up now. Okay, Jed, it's a great okay. night for football. We're having a great crowd. 
and we're ready to go with the second half. Well, you have to be thrilled with how it has gone in the return since 1991. Uh, you were blessed with good weather, football-type weather, and uh, I know you're going to kind of evaluate things, and knowing you, I know you say the bar is raised, and you're going to raise it, I think, even further for everybody next year. Exactly, Jed, and Hershey, where the bar literally has been raised. Uh, we're proud to host this uh, outstanding event. Uh, we're trying to create a bowl-like atmosphere, and with great crowds, and with great weather, and with... Uh, Really excellent uh, football games uh, for the last couple of days. We are just so proud to, to be the host. And, and you've got to be uh, pleased with the with the turnout from the Newcastle folks. I mean, you know, that's about as far away as you can get in the state. And here they come uh, from exit 1A of the turnpike all the way down here to Hershey. They were here in March to root their basketball team on. And uh, they've got to have 5,000 people here this, this it, evening. It's just outstanding. When you see uh, community support, it's uh, high school football, uh, athletics, uh, and athletes like they do. It's just outstanding. A lot of credit to uh, uh, to the Newcastle fans and to uh, all the teams really that have traveled here. Well, I know your staff, uh, Scott Mullen in particular, who uh, manages the arena and the stadium, has been working endlessly to uh, you know coordinate this whole effort here. They've done an outstanding job, and my hats are off to that great staff. And there's the opening kickoff, kind of a pop-up. Newcastle take over at the 33. Well, I know you like your football. That was as good a 24-minute blitz as you're going to see somebody put on. That was scintillating. Uh, Central Bucks West is a truly a football machine. And, uh, you know, Newcastle is not a bad football team. It's just the fact that uh, Central Bucks is just so outstanding. Yeah, that's right. I mean, sometimes you just run into a buzzsaw, and that's what uh, Newcastle is faced with here. Exactly. Opening minute, Joe Cowart going on to center, first and 10 at the 33. This young man has run very hard. That's Gordon Austin, and he runs rough shot into Brian Buckley again. He's been all over the place, along with Angelo Polina. That Gordon Austin, number 27, he's only 160 pounds. And, I mean, he plays like he's 250. Look at this. Head down, takes the pop from the linebacker, but tries to keep his legs moving and uh, try to gain some more positive yardage. That's a lot of heart there very, from number 27. Very crisp tackling. Excellent tackling. Mr. McKinney, I know you've always, uh, when you see these guys in high school, there's so much history in here. It's like a who's who in sports. I know you'll be keeping track of some of these guys to see how they do down the no road. No question. We all remember Tony Dorsett Third down, guys. Third down. in the Big 33 game. Big 33 over the years. Be back here next summer and the like. You've set records this year, haven't you? Candy Lane, this uh, warm weather and the like. I mean, it's been spectacular for you this winter. The company as a whole, and Hershey Park in particular, has had an outstanding record year. Uh, it's just uh, uh, just been great. Uh, Candy Lane has been drawing extremely well, and obviously with crowds like this, we're just very pleased. 35 nothing. third and four now for Newcastle. Quick handoff again. They whip it into Gordon Austin. He's got nowhere to go, nowhere to hide, and in on the tackle is Brian Colahan. And, of course, Hershey played host to one of the most historic uh, occurrences in sports ever. Will Chamberlain's 100-point night right across the way at the Hershey Park. Exactly. 450,000 people were there that night to see that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, there were 4,000, but a million people claim to have been there now. Exactly. All related to people who come over the Mayflower. March 4th, 1962 against the New York Knicks. Good punt by Kane. Oh. Fielded and dropped and getting dumped is Sean Michael Johnson. Well, there was a lot of, you know, politics, Hershey getting it. Um, you've always taken pride in having scholastic type events. You've hosted District 3 events before. Uh, you aggressively went after it, and, and and you have to be pleased with the result. I know you're in for the long haul, as long as it takes and whatever it takes. Exactly, Jed. We went after it fairly, openly, honestly, and we are very pleased to have been awarded it. We're going to keep it as long as we can. First and ten for Central Bucks West. In an opening half, there's another big run. We're going to see some new blood in here, fresh legs and Chris Ortiz. Central Bucks West has set the bar pretty high here so far. Five possessions, five scores. So the pressure's really on here in the second half to open up with a score on that sixth possession. By the way, the last possession for Newcastle, the fourth of the game, two minutes and 14 seconds. That ups their number right now to 16 minutes and 30 seconds, but no score on the board. Nice to see Chris Ortiz get a carry. Serious knee injury in preseason. Missed much of the year. But here he is at the state finals in Hershey. Getting a carry, trying to lead his team to victory. 
good hitter up the middle. I believe that's Pashati for a gain of about a yard or two. And this Newcastle crowd is still into it, isn't it? Yeah, they they, sure they're, they're here in mass. Uh, they're going to sit around and enjoy the. I mean, they, they broke a lot of trends. They won their first WPIL championship since 1973. I mean, you get this far into the draw, Gary, something we've talked about. There are no losers, and I mean, we mean that literally. It's a trite statement, but it has an awful lot of meaning to it. Well, plus you get into this atmosphere here at Hershey. It's like a celebration year-round. You get here and you're playing, you're doing your best, but someone's going to walk out here with a losing score, someone with a winning score, both of their heads held high. There's Pashati, first down and more. Goodbye. Here he is, bringing it 20. Pouring it on at the 10, and it's a touchdown. His fifth of the night. It's 41 to nothing, Central Box West. A 64-yard scamper for Pashati for his fifth touchdown. Six possessions, six scores. Hey, the score continues here in terms of the music that CB West is playing. Who is your mailman? You are going to be busy. The next great player in Pennsylvania. You're looking at him. All by himself. He's just a junior, top. is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's scary, right. That is the scary part. Awesome. awesome player. You know, he's 240 pounds, and he can move down that field as quick as any 240 pounder I have seen. Bob Tumulty, he's been busy swinging the right gate for the extra point. Bang. 8.01 to go. It's 42 to nothing, Central Bucks West. And I believe we had that. In ISO, we put uh, Pashati kind of under the eye. Three plays, look at him. Three plays, 72 yards, a minute 45. Pashati with five touchdowns out of the six. What an evening. Here he is, one on one for you. He's going to get the call. What's it? It's a very simple play. Just over the tackle, right tackle. And the holes are so big that. Uh, Pashadi just has uh, excellent speed. Once he gets past the linebackers, he's off to the races. And the landing gear comes down. He's cleared for takeoff. Goodbye. 17 carries, 237 yards. What do we say? He needs 252 yeah. to get to 2,000 yeah. tonight. That's when they'll pull the plug on his evening to a standing up. I do believe. Well, you know, this is the same offensive line, basically, that uh, enabled Central Bucks West to gain over 500 yards as a team on the ground all mind you uh, last year in the quad a championship game in their 44 to 20 beating of Upper St. Clair so you know it, it, you know what you talk to the Central Bucks West people and they really do feel that this team is a better club than last year's championship team which is a mouthful because we were most impressed last year 44-20 against Upper St. Clair. Fair catch called for at the 29. Mr. McKinney, rather, a couple of questions real quick. Sure. You got wrestling, team wrestling, and uh, basketball, and I know you're committed long-term to keeping those over at the Hershey Park Arena as well. You, you feel that with the tradition that you've developed here with all sports, you kind of want to be the central focus point. That's right. We feel all the roads lead to Hershey, uh, first of all, with basketball. Then uh, with wrestling, uh, obviously, uh, soccer is uh, holding their... Uh, state finals here and now with football uh, we really feel that we uh, want to be the, the crossroads of uh, Central Pennsylvania sports finals. First and ten right now for Newcastle. It's been a while since we've seen Justin Sheldon get the carry all the way up to the 35. You and this company take great pride, don't you, as far as hosting the youth and kind of being in the epicenter of this of this whole experience over the, you know, just not only these couple of days, but really year-round, don't you? Jed, we truly do. We try to make certain that the experience that uh, everyone that uh, comes here uh, is a good one, uh, both from a uh, spectator standpoint and from a family standpoint and certainly from a player standpoint. We try our very best to make the product the very best we can. Well, thank you for stopping in. I, I cannot say enough how, how much we appreciate what you and your staff have done to make our uh, whole situation a big peel-off run this time for John Rosati at a Newcastle first down. But, again, thank you very much, sir. It's thank been a wonderful weekend and a great start. Thank you, Jed, for the outstanding job you've all done. And we'll look forward to seeing you in wrestling and basketball. You got it. We'll be here soon enough. Keep Happy her going, holidays. gentlemen. Happy Jay holidays. Bruce McKinney, the chairman of the board holidays. of the Hershey Entertainment and Resort Company. Joining us live, and uh, we'll get Jim Catapio down here in a little bit. 
First down at midfield. Well, guys, it's time to start putting this game and this team into historical perspective, something we were doing a little bit in the first half. I just ask it flat out, is the best team in the 11-year run of the PAA State Championships? I think it is. Well, yeah, that was certainly... Pass to Gordon Austin. He's quick, 5-7. Hiccup quick to the 27-yard line and another Newcastle first down. These guys are... Still in there, scrapping it out. Yeah, I'll tell you, Gordon Austin has guts to burn. 160 pounds, and look at him. He's cutting right across the middle. That's linebacker free safety territory, you know. You get across the middle there, and you're going to get popped. He doesn't care. He's 160 pounds. He's looking for that football, looking to pick up a first down for his team. That's the kind of guts part you like in a football player. Appreciate the visit with Jay Bruce McKinney. Now Jim Contapio joins us, head coach at Wilson High School, and one of our high school experts that we've uh, been talking to this weekend. Another carry and a good positive gain for John Rosati. I give these Newcastle kids an awful lot of credit. They're really up against a juggernaut tonight, Jim. Uh, I, I think it's the best team I've seen in the 11 years in Quad A. I, I, they're unbelievable. I would have to agree. Last year we had the opportunity to pull up against Central Bucks West, and they are so much better this year. They're bigger and stronger. I think they're a more well-rounded football team on both sides of the ball this year. And you know what, Coach? Uh, the, the, the great All-State lineman Carver went down in the first series. They, they really haven't missed him. John Bear came in is doing a great job. I mean, you lose an All-State lineman like that in your first series in the championship game, that may spell trouble for a lot of teams. Well, most most high school programs losing an All-State first-teamer would feel the crunch, not Central Bucks West. That just shows you the depth that they have, and this is why they're as good as they are. Amazing. You know, Mike Patton, I mean, they, you can put nine, ten guys in the box, they run the same playbook year in, year out. They just change the names, but why is why does it work as well as it does? Well, they're using a variety of formations, and they really put you at a major disadvantage. And the key is, Jed, you can't match up physically. And Mike Pett knows that. And as long as he knows that he's going to keep coming at you, they don't have to throw the football. They're very multiple. I know people don't think it, but they're very multiple in their offensive formations on how they try to outnumber you on both sides of the ball. Newcastle with the first down right here, but coach, they line up so tight. You know, normally you see that tailback on most teams, six, seven yards deep. On this team, it's three, four yards behind you. Everything's tight, hard to see, I would think, for the linemen. Well, it's impossible. They got offensive linemen that average 6'3", 260, 280, and 300 pounds for the defense, who most people are average size. You can't see the ball carrier in that. It's like a rugby match. Joe Coward under center. It's first and 10 at the 10. Motion man is shell down. Back goes Coward looking under the gun into the end zone incomplete. And, I mean, they were pushing the envelope. Coming on the blitz, Brian Buckley. They just seem to have the right play on at the right time. I mean, you say it sometimes luck follows preparation, but there's, there's no luck involved in this. They might have the best coaching staff in the state of Pennsylvania go along with the best group of kids in the state of Pennsylvania. When you put everything together, Mike Pettin, we all know, is legendary, might be the top football coach in the history of the state of Pennsylvania, but he has a staff that's second to none, and he has a program second to none. There you're looking at Buckley. He's played a whale of a game at the linebacker spot for C.B. West tonight. Coward on a keeper, and he's sacked back at the 14. That's interesting when you say a great coach and a great program. What makes Mike Patton stand out, in your opinion? No one, you, you, you've gone against him. I mean, what, what makes him such a standout? He's a disciplinarian. I mean, when you, might, when you meet Mike Patton, you're in, when you meet him, you know, just by talking to the gentleman. He's so straightforward, and he gets his kids to play the same way. They play very physical, they play smart, and they're very disciplined, and they play the game the way it's supposed to be played, on, in between the lines, and you don't ever see a Central Bucks West kid coming up, celebrating, and putting on any nonsense on the field. Act like you've been there before, as they would say. This pass complete on the outside. I believe that's Corey Lemon. It is. Lemon, a 6'2", 180-pound junior. As far as Newcastle, now, first WPIL title since 1973. I say discard outcome tonight. It's something you build on. Uh, this is a great experience for the Newcastle program. They knew they were coming in here, and the chances of beating Central Bucks West were not very good. But let's not just let this game destroy a great season and the start of a good program at Newcastle. 
pass is caught on the outside by Rosati, and there's a wave led by Brian Buckley again. Gary? Well, Coach, when you, when you think that four years ago they were 0-10 in the first year of Coach Fuller, and now here they are in the state championship game. What a long way they've come. And you look at this team tonight. They, they've taken some hunks of yardage. They've controlled the clock at times. It just hasn't been a chance to finalize this evening. You want to know something? Anybody else but Central Bucks West in this football game, and they're in the football game. Exactly. Man, we're seeing a superhuman football team across the field, and I don't care if he had the NCAA Division II football program here tonight. Central Bucks West is a cut above the rest. And you know something, Coach? What, what is, has to be uh, really pleasing to the Newcastle football coaching staff is that they've generated a resurgence of football in Newcastle. It's a great program throughout the 70s. Schooley played on the uh, 1970 team, a graduate of uh, Newcastle in 1971. And now, you know, the team has taken, the, this town rather, has taken this team to heart once again. And, and football is very important to Newcastle once again. And it's due to Schooley and this 1998 team and this run to Hershey. Just listen to the fans here right now. Even though they're losing this football game 42 nothing on every great play Newcastle has, it's a roar coming from the stands. Well, yeah. right now you're in the midst of a 10 play, six minute and four, or six minute and four second drive again, and yet you still have that uh, you know, chance to get in the end zone. They haven't done it yet. First and 10. Real interesting formation. There's another big game for Central Bucks West. Oh, they just keep coming at you. That's Bill Stone. Back up quarterback. Uh, you know, when you talk about, you, you coach at Wilson, and, you know, you're in the eastern half of the draw, do you know that there are programs out there that if you want to get to this particular level, that you've got to, one, either be like, or you've got to at least have some pieces like them? Last year when we made it to the state playoffs at Wyoming Valley West, I was so happy that we played Central Bucks West in the Wilkes-Barre area so the people from the coal region could see what big time quad A football is all about and what you need to do to compete. You know, you can talk about the great teams of Berwick and so forth, but there's a major difference when you step up to the plate in quad A football. And you know, in Pennsylvania, especially in the East, you will never get to the state championship game unless you can beat Central Bucks West head to head. Well, coach, when coach, when coaches go out to plan a championship program, and it comes in stages, don't they also have to kind of plan for a system that's going to beat the very best teams out there that they're going to play? You know, anybody can do things if you have great talent and beat the bad teams. It's beating the best teams that you really have to talk about. The different styles of doing it though in football. You know, you might pass. This guy runs the ball. Uh, it, it certainly has got to be a challenge when you step up to find that method to beat the best teams in the state. Well, right now you got to understand that to beat Central Bucks West, you have to match him on the line of scrimmage, and that is the most difficult part. How they keep coming up with such big, strong individuals is incredible. As a high school coach, you sit here and you can't. Un it's amazing all those big individuals out there. And until you can match him on the line of scrimmage, you will not beat him. You know what I noticed in warm-ups tonight? I saw the Newcastle kids looking over and watching Central Bucks work out, and I mean, they're going, look at that appliance over there. Look at this guy, the size. It's intimidating, and I think they got into their head before they even went in to prepare a little bit. Come to the end of the third quarter of play. I want you to further that thought a little bit. I want to remind you, as we head to the fourth quarter, the PWA presents in association with PCN, Viewers on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. This has been a historic weekend for us here in Hershey in the return of the PAA Football Championships for the first time since 1991. All the games going live on PCN all weekend long, and the tradition will continue with the team championships in the month of March for wrestling, and then we'll have these parade of champions in wrestling, and then Gary's favorite event, the eight games, four girls, four boys in basketball in uh, late March. And uh, we'll have uh, all of them for you on uh, PCN. And again, it's uh, just awesome as always working with our uh, WITF production in partnership with the PIAA and PCN. Go back to that question I was asking you. They looked, they saw, and went, wow. I can only go back to last year, the first time that I've ever seen Central Bucks West in person. You're exactly right. When we took a look at them on the field, we were intimidated. And there's no doubt, Jed, I will guarantee that Newcastle tonight, when they came out, 
were looking at Central Bucks, and there was definitely an intimidation factor. Mike Oriel here, uh, again, a work in progress, a sophomore, Mark, but a good look off on the screen. Yeah, Mike Oriel, he's a fine throwing quarterback, even though uh, Mike Pettin doesn't like to put the ball in the air. Like he says, we can throw. Uh, Mike Oriel's a very fine quarterback, just a sophomore, and uh, when games get kind of out of hand, Mike Pettin will give Oriel uh, 10 to 15 throws per ball game, and uh, Oriel, uh, he is a, a very fine quarterback. He's got a bright future ahead of him, just a sophomore. Now Bill Stone back in. One advantage that Central Bucks West has is over the years, they have some big scores in their games, and a lot of their underclassmen get a lot of valuable playing time on Friday and in the playoffs. Coach Ken Tapio, you know, each coach has kind of a pet peeve that they look at. I'm sure there are things in your program you look at a little bit more than other things. Obviously, in this program, Coach Petten looks at blocking above all else. Well, I mean, his number one goal is to run the football. And you want to know something, though, they can throw it exceptionally well, and they have over the years. But I'm telling you, when they when they school their kids and they develop their kids in the offseason, blocking is number one, tackling is number two. Because if they can execute both very well, they're going to win a lot of football games. Well, everybody loves the glitz of the passing game and the thing, but, I mean, you run for go in this game, period. I mean, you can't run, you don't win. It's that simple as Buckley charges forward, another big gain and another first down, a gain of 12. All the way to the Newcastle 33. Bach moving with 10.30 to go. But you've got to run the ball. All four state champions this year dominated on the line of scrimmage running the football. The passing game really has been non-existent in all four football games. And you're exactly right. You have to be able to run the football to win a state championship in the state of Pennsylvania. Well, I'm talking to a guy who likes to throw that ball. And too. you're exactly right. Yeah. But I realize that, too. And I know being there one time, if we were able to run the ball in the second half, we would have had the state title. But we weren't. Saw Gordon Austin sitting on the bench over there for Newcastle, a young man who's played very, very hard tonight. Runs hard, lays the leather on you at the end of the run. Get a feeling he might be back here again next year. Well, they get a little taste of this, and sometimes when you leave here and you know you've been to the state title games, when you leave here tonight, the one thing in the back of your mind is I want to get back. What do I have to do to get back? You know, Newcastle may be back here, but Gordon Austin will not be. He's a senior. He'll be moving on after this year. And again, the tears, when you know that this is your last game, and this is not the way that you wanted to leave the stadium. First and five for West now at the 27-yard line. This Ortiz trying to get to the outside, picking his way, and the undertow finally catches up at the 28-yard line. It's a continuous clock with a mercy rule. It's a 42-0 game. Central Bucks West, five touchdowns for Dustin Pashati. Pashati, Junior. Oh. Stud. Mailman, get Div ready. He's going to be one. busy. Last year they had Armstrong, who was the player, the top yeah. player in the state of Pennsylvania last year. Dustin Pashati last year played defensive end. I remember him clearly doing a great job at that position. Here he is a, a year later, and he will be next year the premier football player in the state of Pennsylvania and on top of every recruiting list, and he will be recruited probably as a fullback because that young man can run the ball. Dave Armstrong off to the University of Michigan. There's Bill Stone, stutter step move. He's still cooking it. Inside the 15 to the 14-yard line and another Central Bucks first down. What the move by Stone does right there is it stands up the defender. You know, you want to stay in that good athletic position when you're playing in any sport. And watch this. Stone comes down around the corner. He's got the defender in front of him. Watch the defender's down in a good athletic position right here. Now watch when he stands up. Defender starts to come up, yeah. and all of a sudden he just stutter steps right around him. Beautiful run by Stone. That's well, something you don't teach a great running back, and you know that. You got the feet, you use it. Fullback position, making a comeback with a push. Every team in college going eight guys in the box. Now you got to counter a little bit. You get a guy with a little bit of bolt and some blocking ability. Now that position's taking on new meaning. Uh, there's no doubt that big fullback in the college ranks right now is extremely important. Besides, Dave Armstrong last year for Central Bucks, I was told the other day they moved him to defensive tackle at the University of Michigan. There's Stone whirling through the door right to the one-yard line. He didn't make it. Got close. I don't mean to bring up bad news for the Newcastle fans. This is possession number seven in the game, and this will be touchdown number seven if they score. Well, they're right on the welcome mat, as you see. That's the distance to the yellow stripe. You got young kids in there right now that want to score as much as the first group does right now, so there's no slacking off when you look at Central Bucks' first, second, or third team players. They want to get in the end zone because there's an opportunity for me to score a touchdown in a state championship game. That's got to be a tremendous advantage for teams like Central Bucks West when they can get into games like this, important games, and, and play the second, third, fourth teams. Gives them a valuable experience for next year. Experience. 
Their goal to go at the one-yard line. Stone on a keeper. The pile moves. That's how dominant it has been. Touchdown, Central, Box West. 48 to nothing, Bucks, and there's Bill Stone, the quarterback. We thought time of possession this game would be so mammoth, and in a sense it has been, but 22 minutes and 33 seconds for Newcastle, 17 minutes and 30 seconds for Central Bucks West, and yet those 17 minutes and 30 seconds have been punishing on the defense for Newcastle. <laughs> Are they nearing a the record yet? I mean, I know last year they rushed for over 500 yards in a terrible weather kind of situation. I'm sure they're up there pretty high at this point. 449 yards to date. There's for the extra point, and that is good. He snuck that one in. 7.48 to go. Timothy, I think, is the most exhausted player right now on the Central Bucks West team. We talked to you earlier this afternoon just about the Mount Carmel, uh, their down guys. This offensive line for Central Bucks West is good as you can find at this level. I mean, considering the experience that they have, the size and the athleticism, you just don't see this kind of stuff every day. Not in any high school level. I'd love to see Canton McKinley come up there. Wouldn't it be great to have a national championship game in high school football? I mean, the Pennsylvania State champion in Quad A versus Ohio. We do it in the Big 33 game. Wouldn't that be an awesome game if we can find a dome stadium to get it done? I mean, you're talking about two great programs. How can you be any better than Central Bucks West? That's, that's what we were saying earlier. How can they be six teams <laughs> above these guys in the USA Today poll? Well, you have to understand these USA Today polls. They had Berwick ranked up there in the top five most of the year. Okay, I'm sorry. You put Berwick out on this field here today, and I think Central Bucks West is going to win going away. Yeah. That last drive, a typical Central Bucks West drive, nine plays, 85 yards, five minutes and 25 seconds seven plays or seven sets of plays and seven touchdowns that's one of the reasons we uh, when jed and i discuss the usa today poll we call it the mythical national poll because it is, it is. i mean uh, you know it's it's very difficult to gauge uh, the various classes of high schools throughout the nation and uh, you know some some teams come up and sneak up and surprise them and then other teams get the get the advantage of the next year because uh, may maybe they were better the year before for instance cumberland valley in 92 they were they were non-existent basically throughout the year uh, then and all of a sudden they ran the table, appeared in the uh, in the top uh, 15. Yep, and then next next season, preseason number one, Harrisburg High, who was loaded for bear in District Three at that time. I was surprised that Central Bucks West was not rated higher at the beginning yeah. of the year, knowing how many returning players they have from the year before. I was surprised. I expected to see CB West in the top five in the country at the beginning of the year, but I don't even think they were ranked at the beginning of the year, which was very, very surprising. Yeah, I think the top team from the East was Cumberland Valley. Cumberland they Valley. Were nine. That's exactly right. And CB West probably had as many or more people coming back as Cumberland Valley, and CB West had beat him head to head the year before, so he couldn't understand it early, but right now it's coming to the top. We yeah. know who the best is in the state of Pennsylvania. Sure is. I'll tell you, I have a lot of respect for the Newcastle kids. They've uh, okay. fought hard. Well, the book on them coming in was no shortage of heart. You can certainly see that here tonight. But right now, the, the largest margin of victory in PIA final history is 43 points. And uh, that being threatened right here at the moment. That was a 49-6 win that we did, uh, Southern Columbia over Western Beaver in 1994. When you talk about great coaches, we just saw Mike Patton there. Is it attention to detail? Yes, it is. Kind of separates him a little yes, bit. Yes, it is. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's attention to detail and putting the time in the finer points that a lot of coaches don't work on that Mike Pettin does along with his staff. Coach, you also hear the word intolerance thrown around an awful lot, that the great coaches are the ones who are intolerant of mistakes. Not necessarily mean, but intolerant. Well, that's repetition, and that's the discipline part, and that's the confidence part that these kids have at Central Bucks West. Joe Coward looking Kane. There's that basketball experience and a first down inside the 30, all the way to the 25-yard line and the longest gain of the night for Newcastle. I'll tell you, this Pat Kane is a nice look at tight end. He can get downfield, and he's got nice, soft pillow hands, a gain of 54 yards. Well, you know darn well right now that Newcastle wants to get in the end zone. There's one thing that doesn't want to happen is to be shut out in the state championship game. They're going to do everything they can in these last six and a half minutes to get in the end zone. Take the victory where you can get it. How hard is Coach Mike Petton right now working his young kids in there to keep the shutout? Well, let me tell you, right now everybody on that Central Park Park sideline wants to shut out because it's very important to those seniors to leave here with a shutout. But sometimes you get caught 
If you know what I mean, you want to give everybody a shot to play in the game because they practiced hard since August, and if they score, they score. But right now, you know they're fighting their hearts out. They don't want to give up a touchdown. I give you the statement, you practice like you play. I know you're a big, big stickler for, for Monday through Friday. I would love to be at a Central Bucks practice. I would love to see how they run their program, to see how things get done Monday through Friday, and I'm sure there are very few mistakes going on. Has an awful lot to do with how things are going. They're looking deep. He's got a man. Touchdown! Corey Lemon, they got on the board. Nice throw by Coward. Both of them on this drive. You couldn't have walked it up any better. Now, that was an incredible pass and a great catch. Great concentration in the end zone. These, look at these people here in, in the stands. They're going crazy like as if they're ahead in this football game. That's the great support that they have from Newcastle. Talk about your perfect lead. Look at this. Hands right there, ball in the hands. Uh, it's close. <laughs> maybe not quite the possession we thought it was when he first uh, looked like he was going to the end zone. Super slow mo, though. So. <laughs> That's the toughest catch for a wide receiver. Oh, he's, over he's, the uh, oh. Yeah, Great coming, pass. Over, coming over the shoulder like that. Yeah, he lobbed it up there. That was that was a beautiful pass by Coward. That was one of the best throws of the night that we've seen. But uh, yeah, Coward, he has shown a lot of guts tonight. He's hung in there. He's gotten knocked around. Finally gets some points on the board for his new guy. Yes. Well, Romano is good on the extra point. 5.55 left, 49 to 7. Well, that's a pretty way to get on the board. And here's the throw and catch again. And Cowart looked great on this particular drive. Yeah. Hit him right in stride, though. That was a beautifully timed throw route. I've got to say, he didn't have it. <laughs> I'm going to say, hey, but I'm not being rushing right. the touchdown, believe me. <laughs> If there's a mercy rule right there, it was. Uh, it's yeah. not going to affect the outcome of this <laughs> no, it isn't. game, I don't Now nah, let the young man feel good about himself. Yeah, you right. got it. It's stuck to him long enough. Uh, and there you look at the Newcastle <laughs> fans. They're feeling a little bit better right now. I'll tell you what, you marry the community and the football team. We've talked about that with the Mount Carmel program, and, and, and you're seeing that now with Newcastle. You know, there's a resurgence in the football program thanks to this 1998 team and their great run. Had a little downtime in the 80s, and, and like you said, when uh, when Coach Schooley took over in 1995, it went 0-10 his first year. And think of the strides you make in a program from going 0-10 to coming to Hershey several years later. And they were not the favorite going into the playoffs out in the Pittsburgh area at the beginning. So they did a great job getting here, and they deserve a lot of credit for it. Nine plays, 68 yards on that drive, 49-7, 5.55 to go in the game, and Central Bucks West with a kickoff. Oh boy. Big hole up the middle. This is Damian Smith. He's still alive all the way to midfield. Huge gainer that time. Damian Smith with about a 35-yard rip on the kickoff return. Oh, man, about 39 yards. Not a lot of fancy juking by this team. It's just head north and south and get down toward that uh, line that says touchdown. I'll tell you Full what. speed ahead. Central Bucks West has a great kick return team. Uh, last week, Dave Edwards took the opening kickoff against Parkland. 67 yards as CB West got into great shape at the Parkland 28 right off the bat. That really has to help out a football team. I mean, when you have a good return game like that, you know, great field position, you can hit the home run maybe now and again. I mean, that really has to help you out. Anytime you can run. return any kick out past the 35 yard line, that's a major plus for the offense. Ball is dropped and it is recovered. Take it down, take it down. You're looking at it right now in your Newcastle, you say, my gosh, they're human. <laughs> Phil Diacomaco is in on the... Uh, I was looking turn. at the uh, Central Bucks West offensive line here right now. It's probably their third offensive line out there. And if you look at them, they're all clones. Everybody across the front looks about 240, but they're puppies <laughs> right now. And see, in a couple of years, they'll be up there in the 260 to 270 category and they'll be big and strong. The only mystery left, this is the eighth possession of the game, if they can score their eighth touchdown in a row. <laughs> Bill Stone, the senior, getting some time. And somebody jumped. Yeah, I'd like to switch gears right now and take a tip of the hat to the uh, the production Red. people at WITF. The hard work that these guys have put in, I mean, it is very difficult to present the sights and the sounds of four PIAA championship football games with this quality. Dead ball. And I've said it before, I'll Rotate. say it again. You know, these people are the best Five production guys. people Take in the down. state, bar none. And I'd like to highlight two people uh, specifically. Director Flip Cousins. He's uh, the technical detail man, and uh, he's giving you all the pictures. And Flip's done basketball, football, wrestling, making telecasts 
second to none. And also, direct producer, Andrea Campbell. She's leaving WITF. This is her final telecast. She's going on to some other ventures. And, uh, Andrea, you are a true professional and a delight to work with. Your talents will sorely be missed at WITF. Thank you to WITF's production staff for all the sights and sounds here at Hershey this weekend. It's been a lot of fun, no question about it. I wouldn't be anyplace else. Chocolate Town, USA. What do you think so far of the Hershey experience this weekend? Well, I think they did a great job hosting the tournament. It's a great place to be. And, you know, for our sake, I hope that uh, the tournament does remain close by. It makes it a lot convenient for us people in this area of the state. I'd like to echo what Mark said about the crew. I mean, you get all the different angles of the game. You get the sounds, the sights. We got inside and heard the referees throughout the weekend. We saw every picture you could want. We got instant replays like this all night long picking up the action and giving you a chance to see it again and there is no more quality crew around than the production crew of WITF and all the great people down there and again Andrea thanks for a great job and, and good luck with whatever you go out and do I'm sure you're going to be a very very successful person ball at the 22 and off Damian Smith he's a junior he's still cooking it still burning it to the five yard line a gain of 17 it's a stable <laughs> well no matter who they put in there they get after it, don't they? They're blocking, they're running, they're doing everything consistently. That's why they're a great football program. And Mike Barrett, a wide receiver in there, doing a kickoff block 10 yards downfield. Now, Coach, how important is it to, to have the system as far down as you can get it? Let's say the peewee level, you know. Uh, does my, Coach Mike Petton maybe have some input as to what type of systems and what kind of practices they run at that level? Is that how a Central Bucks West gets so good? Smith, touchdown. Yeah, I... Damian Smith is in from five yards out. Having consistency in the program, starting down from the mini level on up to your junior high, your JV program, the same system, the same numbering system, same hold system, same play is a tremendous plus because a lot of these kids here might be playing for the fifth year in the Central Bucks system. And when you're a senior, it's so easy now. It's all hat. There's very few mental mistakes. And in the game, if you got to think before you do it, you make mistakes. Right now, it's all reaction for them. So realistically, these kids could be playing virtually the same system since they were seven or eight years oh, old. Oh, I would, I would think that they probably are. Guys, that five-yard touchdown gave Central Bucks West 500 yards for the night. They also have scored on every possession this season that has got to be a record. Tumulty and got it through there. Well, you're not going to get any style points on that, but effectiveness, <laughs> hey, it still counts for one. Jim, uh, high school football in this state, last year we're projecting almost six, seven million people went to a high school game. Uh, with all the money that's out there, professional sports, affordability and the like, are people reattaching themselves to the community team, the name on the front and not the back right now? There's more to high school football than any other sport, I think, right now. I think locally and across the state of Pennsylvania, people really get into high school sports. I don't care if it's football, basketball. People really get behind it. They love to watch the amateurs out there not getting paid a lot of money, not getting paid anything to play the game, but they're playing for their heart and soul and playing for themselves and their communities. Coach, you mentioned it a few minutes ago here in a game tonight where our team's losing 56-7, to seven, and yet if you look down at the Newcastle fans, the experience, the joy of playing in a championship game, maybe the chance to come back again some other time, the exaltation when their team scored a few minutes ago, it's all there. It's kind of a certain pureness that you don't see out there maybe in the professional ranks. And the once in a lifetime, that little guy in the sideline down there having a lot of fun, that's a dream for him too to be at Hershey Stadium. You know, for a lot of these people, from us being in the central part of the state, we've been at Hershey Stadium so many times. But these people, the first time here, were in the big Hershey Stadium, where the big 33 game is played, where the state champions are. This is a tremendous experience for those people. I heard someone say today, who came in from Mount Carmel, he said, you know, you can smell chocolate everywhere around this place. <laughs> and we've all gone through that at least one time in our lives coming into this town. <laughs> from the lamps downtown and everything. <laughs> 250 left. Well, by the looks of it, Coach Gary Schooley is building something at Newcastle, too. How much pride East and West is there going on with you coaches right now as far as all this? Three out of four for the East. A lot. Next week we have... interesting in January next week, when you guys get together. The next week the state directors meet at Penn State and us Eastern coaches will all walk in with a big smile <laughs> because there's always that who's better, East versus West. Well, I don't think there's any question this year in Quad A, Triple A, and Double A, Eastern football is definitely number one. Coach, first time since 1993, we've had four WPIAL champions in here also. How important is that, uh, you know, as far as the Eastern coaches are concerned, playing the WPIAL champions? Everyone knows a lot of pride out there. 
Well, you know, it's great, though. I mean, everybody, no matter where you're from, feel, should feel good about the football in your area. I guess this year the WPIL coaches sort of have to eat crow a little bit and admit that Pennsylvania has dominated in the state championship. It's not like these games were close. The PA programs have dominated in three of the four football games and were by far the better football teams. We're talking about the eastern side in of Pennsylvania, the eastern part. of course. 56 to 7 and yeah we've you're seen watching tonight in my opinion the best team in the 11 years of this tournament at least for one night anyway uh, I don't think you can argue that right now I don't think there's been a dominance like this other than maybe last year their performance uh, there has not been any level a team that has dominated so physically up front well the largest 4a difference ever in a game was 35 points downingtown in that 49 uh, they were 14 good, win over Woodland Hills we saw that in 96 but even last year, the team didn't score on every possession. I mean, that's perfect. That's like throwing a no-hitter in my, my estimation. You're going down the field, you got 500 yards and yardage again, which equals last year. Uh, how much better can you get? The only problem with that is if you happen to be the punter, and that's the only time you get in the game for Central Bucks West, you didn't get in the actual football game here tonight. But his medal's going to be the same color as everybody <laughs> oh, else at be, the end of the it's evening, It's going right? to be a beautiful gold medal. Believe me, he'll wear it with pride. I'll tell you what, in, uh, in, in these championship games, the, the victor in each game has really shut down their opponent. We've seen, uh, we've seen uh, the 56 to 7 score here. Mount Carmel 44 to 7. Today. Uh, Mount Carmel, a victor. Two shutouts yesterday. Yeah, well, Mr. Cowart working hard. Joe Cowart. He's got a touchdown pass tonight. We talk about the punting, punting in this game. There's been only one punt in the entire game. <laughs> a lot of coast to coast stuff going on tonight. Get the impression the Central Bucks West kids got a little incensed after that last touchdown here with the blitz that we just saw in his last play. I was talking to the coaches uh, at, at halftime up here, and they were telling me, you know, we knew that Central Bucks West was good. We didn't know how good, and I guess they found out the hard way. I guess when you're an underdog, you just hope you don't get their A game. Well, they got the high hard one tonight. Yeah, yeah and I mean, some. you know, you watched Championship Saturday last week. The underdogs took the favorites to the limit and won two out of the three games. So anything can happen in a football game, and you hope when you get there that maybe they won't be on top of their game. Maybe they'll fumble the ball, throw interceptions, or something, but not tonight. Yeah, that wasn't the case tonight. You can see that Central Bucks West was certainly on top of their game from the outset. 40 seconds to go to a championship for Central Bucks West, almost anticlimactic at this point. There's Pat Kane. You'll see him maybe in March here in Hershey on the basketball floor. He's a good one at six foot five. 220 pounds and the Newcastle kids no shame in losing to this no, club boys it's not 20 years from now this tenth, I think the more the years go by then the more this legend's gonna grow with what we just saw here tonight Jim I uh, honestly truly believe that there's no doubt you know I look at this game here I remember back in 85 we played a Bishop McDevitt for a district championship game when they had Broski, Ricky Waters, they had three Division I running backs. And we said to ourselves, my God, of all years to get to this game, but the thing that we kept telling ourselves, we probably lost to one of the best football teams in District 3 history. The same thing here tonight with, with uh, Central Bucks West. As they count it down for Mike Patton, got his 300 career win, and now a second consecutive state champion in Quad A, the first in Quad A to do so. And what we've seen of some of the youngsters don't be surprised of a year from now that these guys have this on their schedule again well if you're a betting man i would bet that they'll be back next year <laughs> i wouldn't bet against them uh even though parkland returns their team intact next year pretty much so there might be some stiff competition norristown it, it returns a great deal of players not in district one to come out of District 1, though, District 1 arguably might be the best football in the state. I know the people here in mid Penn would argue that, but it might be the best. And to come out of there, they're definitely a favorite to win it again next year. Well, they're certainly on an up cycle. Jim, it was delightful working with you all weekend. I really appreciate the uh, perspective that you gave us here. All Thank weekend. you. I Thank appreciate you. it. I had a lot of fun. Jim Contapio, head coach at Wilson. Get here one of these years, will you? We'll have <laughs> all kinds of fun if you're down there. Hey, we plan on getting here someday. We're going to work hard, and hopefully we won't be up here in the box. I told four, 
one of two things. Either we're on the field or in the box. <laughs> no in between. <laughs> no in between. All right, That's buddy. it. Thank you, Jim. There you go. Jim nice. Catapio is a big 33 coach this past summer. And really appreciate that. Well, guys, we just saw, in my opinion, the best night a, a team could have played. I mean, that's the best team in the 11 years well, that we've seen in the tournament for I think one night. And you can make a strong case. I'm not going to say best up, but they were just fabulous. I think Gary put it best. I mean, when you see a football team score on every offensive possession, how rare is that? I don't know if I've ever seen that, quite honestly. And that is, that's, that's a rarity on, on the level of a perfect game, uh, you know, in baseball. That is just a, a, an outstanding performance by Central Bucks West. The offensive line is incredibly dominant. We talked about it uh, with Coach Jim Contapio. They lose their first team All-Stater, Carver, Pat Carver, and hey, they don't miss a beat. Uh, obviously, 56 to 7. But with Newcastle, I'll tell you what, what a long way they've come in the short reign of Gary Schooley. And here they are at Hershey, uh, just several years after an 0 10 season. The future is bright at Newcastle as well. Gary, a coach once in his life likes to go into a championship environment and see his team play their A game. For Mike Petton, it was the best of both worlds. Not only did he get an A game tonight, he got it for the entire postseason. What an exclamation point. Well, you dream about the moment. You, you're always in search of the perfect game. You're, you know you'll never reach it, but you're in search of it all the time. It's kind of like after the Holy Grail. And tonight, Mike Petton's team may have come as close to the perfect game as he'll ever see them play. The third championship in seven years for the Gold and Black. I mean, this game tonight was like taking and putting out the crown on the top of the jewel and just saying, here it is, guys. Here's the best we have to offer. And, and you know, so many times you last into this game and you end up surviving. Tonight, they come into this game and they painted a masterpiece and they walk out of here and the painting is finished for the year. And a chance to start thinking tomorrow again about, could we do it three times in a row? It was a true Rembrandt performance tonight. A lot of thanks again to uh, the staff here at the uh, Hershey Sports and Entertainment uh, Company with uh, Scott Mullen, the uh, general manager, facilities here at the uh, stadium. And again, many thanks to the WITF uh, production crew. Phenomenal job over the weekend. And the PAAA, it was uh, awesome presenting in association with PCN, seeing all four games live on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. We can't wait till the month of March when we bring you wrestling team and the parade of champions and then basketball, March Madness, coming to PCN in the month of March. For Gary Sutton, for Mark Shuey, our entire WITF production crew, from Chocolate Town, USA, a resounding 56-7 win for CB West. Good night, everybody. <laughs> This game was paid for by PCN and your local cable TV 